you on this blustering that be an understatement <laughs> monday evening here in washington county my name is greg rakestraw on loan from the isc sports network here for the west washington live stream it is a non-conference game between rivals that have played each other for decades in a variety of sports as lanesville is visiting claude c combs field today my name is greg rakestraw joined by craig acres craig thank you so much for the invite and uh you rolled the red carpet out not the chamber of commerce <laughs> weather but there's not a lot of places playing baseball yeah, today. Yeah. <clears throat> it's windy but dry here. Your thoughts on what we should expect from today's contest? You know, it's a it's a matchup of two teams that Lanesville has been the, the powerhouse in southern Indiana for many years. West Washington kind of on the uprise. So it's it's a, a, a game where the two teams maybe flip places a little bit from what has been in the past. But Lanesville, <clears throat> with their uh, new head coach, you know, turning things – turning things around, doing the right thing, uh, just like the Senators have done over the past couple of years, you know, going through those growing pains of, of new coaching. Lanes will coming in at 4-10 and on the season, picked up their last victory on Thursday and a 13-10 victory against Henryville. The Senators have the reverse record at 10-4. and Of course, these two teams, members of different conferences, Lanes will part of the Southern Athletic Conference, West Washington, the Potoka Lakes Athletic Conference. The lineup that Brendan Booby will trot to the plate for the Eagles today. Nolan Hall will lead things off in center field, followed by Eli Guernsey, the first baseman. Jackson Payne is at shortstop, batting third. Nick Hubler, the catcher, bats fourth. Austin Graves is the pitcher, batting fifth today. Matt Compton, the third baseman, bats sixth. Jonathan Albers is in right field, batting seventh. C.J. Wiseman, the left fielder, will bat eighth. And Jeremy Guffey, the second baseman, will bat ninth. Ian Rosenbaum is the pitcher today for West Washington. Ian is 2-1 and one on the season. He has walked 14. He has struck out... 29 and his ERA just a tick above three. You know, a, a great way to start the game here. You know, we talked windy, blustery day, but you know these these boys come out. They want to play baseball. That's that's what today is all about. And again, if you're about 30 minutes north of here, you've been seeing kind of off and on <laughs> drizzle throughout the course of the day. Here it has just been gray and uh, and cold for this May 1st. Temperatures in the 50s does not feel that way because of the wind that is blowing through and the count quickly at 2-0. and oh. <laughs> The wind is is definitely whipping. Those of you at home watching, you can see out the, the flag in center field. It's, it's definitely moving. That is some very pliable PVC pipe. Now, this is a pop-up and this is going to give people fits. Second baseman's got it. And let's talk a little shop here. You had better keep your feet moving the entire time. <laughs> yeah. A ball is in the air. And frankly, I'm surprised that didn't move the second baseman and Williams around even a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, that's that's way up in the air. And as soon as it gets up in the air, it's going to blow it, you know, 10 to 15 feet very easily. This is more than a three-club wind that is coming <laughs> straight from the west, which is the way you're looking out to your right in right field. We are facing southwest here. Our orientation at Claude C. Combs Field. So second batter up is Eli Guernsey, the first baseman for the Eagles, batting 235, and he's got six runs batted in on the season. 1-0, misses, and 2-0 is the count. 
Rosenbaum out there on the mound. He's been known to lose his hat. I'm surprised with the wind he hasn't lost it yet. A lot of times it'll be on the ground by the time he finishes his pitching motion. And that misses inside. Count goes to 3-0. and oh. And outfielders are very much playing <laughs> in because of the win today. You're thinking 3-0 take sign here, and that's in for a strike. It's going to take a, a really long drive to get one out there over the outfielder's head with the way the wind is blowing. A relatively shallow park, but wind making it play like it's not that case, and that is ball four. So Guernsey draws the walk, and here is Jackson Payne. Well, it's easy to see from a stat standpoint why Payne and Hubler are batting three and four for Coach Booby's team on the season. Payne, the shortstop, batting 375, does have a home run, and has seven runs batted in. Three weeks left to go in the regular season for each of these two teams. A night ago, the sectional pairings were announced, and these two teams now part of the same sectional for baseball and softball. Interesting guy who got to make all those announcements for softball and baseball. Paul Knighting, absolutely. <laughs> he was on both shows. Tall fella, played basketball at Eastern Illinois. That, that was not the one I was going for. Okay, the other guy would be me. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. Quick toss back, and count remains 1-0. and Those aired last night, the softball pairings at 7 o'clock, and the baseball pairings at 8. This one, good job by the catcher to snag that one in Haley. And the count goes 2-0, and and Rosenbaum, for a third consecutive batter, now is getting behind the Lanesville hitters. And I will... Answer a question you might not even want the answer for. If you wonder, hey, wait a minute, there's three weeks left to go in the season. Why are we getting those <laughs> pairings out so early? I'll tell you after this next pitch from Rosenbaum as he throws that one back over to first. By the way, that is Titan Williams that is the first baseman. I want to make sure we mention him in the field because he does not hit for West Washington. He has got a DH in his spot. Runner goes. Throw down to second base and diving in head first. Stolen base for Guernsey. And this is not surprising that Brendan Booby's team is going to try to manufacture runs. Not a great hitting team, but also, that's frank, the way that his high school coach played the game, and now the athletic director at Lanesville and Zach Payne. Well, and it, it you know, is a great thing for today where you're not going to get a whole lot of long ball hits. You know, if you're going to be able to steal some bases, that's going to help out a bunch. That hits the outside corner. Payne thought he had worked a walk. Not yet. Count goes to 3-1. and one. Well, to finish that thought, the reason the pairings for baseball and softball come out a bit early, A, we want to avoid Mother's Day with that show. B, we're also trying to make sure we can schedule those sectional games around high school graduations. Inside out swing, that'll be a fair ball. And getting the wave around wide turn from third, there will not be a play at the plate. Payne with his eighth RBI of the season. And the Eagles take an early one nothing lead. That was a nice drive out there into right field. You know, where Alex Williams came up ready to throw to second, um, but the, the runner stopped there at first, unable to keep the run from scoring on that short uh, hit out to right field. So here's the catcher and Hubler to the plate. He's batting 308 with six runs batted in. And so these teams playing at West Washington today. The potential rematch, if it happens during the sectional, would be at Ed Jager Field in Lanesville, which is celebrating its 30th season wow. of Lanesville baseball. Runner goes. Pitch is high. Throw down and that's easily a stolen base. Eli Haley's going to have to make the transfer behind home plate a lot quicker if he's going to throw out these Lanesville runners. Frankly, that puts more pressure on Rosenbaum to not get those guys on <laughs> from a West Washington perspective. That is in for a strike. And the count levels at one and one. The Eagles, their victory on Thursday was 13 to 10. So they've won some slugfests this year. Ground ball, high hopper. Good job in the third baseman charge. He looks the runner back. Errant throw, and that's an error. And they're going to hold the runner at third base. And again, with one out, no need to force the issue. Third baseman might have held that ball just a tick too long running the Runner back to second, but frankly, a good throw, and he makes the play at first base. So E5, Hubler now will come in. Courtesy runner will replace him for Lanesville. That is number 17. Bushmeyer. 
So Klusmeyer out there at second base. You get a courtesy runner for both the pitcher and catcher. So last three runners have all reached for the Eagles. Able to lay off that one is Graves, who is the pitcher today. He is batting 259. Graves just a sophomore. This is, as you expect, kind of a team that's scuffling a little bit, a little bit of a young team that Coach Booby has this year at Lanesville. And this misses. 2-0 the count. Rosenbaum falls behind again to another batter, and that's where he has been struggling all, you know, for this for this part of the inning. He hasn't been able to get ahead of any of the Lanesville batters. That's in for a strike. Well, you'll note on that last pitch, now with runners at second and third, he is working from the windup again. Count now two and one. Delivers that one. Fastball above the belt that Graves swings and misses. And the count at two and two. And Rosenbaum basically averaging a strikeout every other inning so far this year. Five games, 21 innings pitch, so he's averaging more than a strikeout per inning. Just missed the K there. As couldn't hit the outside corner. Count runs full at three and two. Outfielders again very much shading in because of the stiff breeze today. That one got by. Runner's going to try to advance and score and throw not in time. Runner will stop at third base with nobody really backing up the play at home. So a wild pitch on the walk is what will allow Payne to come around and score and make it 2 nothing Lanesville here in the top half of the first. And then you've got runners at the corners still with only one down. Rosenbaum's got to find a way to, to manufacture an out here somewhere. So here's Matt Compton. Compton batting a buck 48. Two runs batted him. Infielders playing at more of a double play depth. In other words, if Compton can hit a ground ball here anywhere in the infield, good chance the third run of the inning will score for the Eagles. We're going to try to get in the pickle. He turns and throws it to second. They will take the out and I think early game, that's not exactly a bad idea if you're West Washington. Make sure you get the out. Right, get get the out and get out of this half of the inning. Now shortstop, not sure if it was kind of cleats that got into him or just kind of the forward momentum of the runner in Graves. Yeah, Mason Cox out there shaking up, shaking up just a little bit. So Graves is out 1-6. to six. The courtesy runner, Klusmeyer, will get credit for the steal of home. Bases are now empty. It's 3 nothing. But again, in the top of the first, Craig, I'm not sure that's not the right play. Just if they're going to give you an <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, if they're going to give you an take out, it. get an out and, and get out of this half of the inning and come up and see what your bats can do. The, the Eagles' bats have, have been on fire so far, you know, so see if, see if the Senator bats are hot. This is the first pitch that Compton has faced since that was a first pitch decision to go for the double steal by Lanesville. Compton a couple of runs batted in on the year. Compton A senior. Sprays this one foul. And the count goes to one and one. Rosenbaum even on this at bat, so you know he hasn't fallen behind, which is kind of the case that has happened to him over the first few batters. It's in for a strike. Count goes to one and two. And in Rosenbaum's defense, I would imagine that you know it, you're trying to figure out exactly, okay, how am I pitching? <laughs> with this wind almost pushing me off the mound yeah. at times. Two and two. And you see his follow through there is more towards first base, which I think he's compensating for the wind that's blowing against him a little bit. This one, right field. Again, he was playing, and the wind will just knock that down, and that will fall for a base hit. On a more normal day, that's an easy <laughs> pop-up. An easy pop-up to right to field. To right field, but nothing will be easy for the outfielders today. That's a base knock, and Lanesville will send a seventh batter to the plate. Well, and I don't even know that that was a, a super strong hit either. It was almost, you know, off his fist popped up out there, but um, Alex Williams not able to chase that one down in right field. So here is Jonathan Albers, the right fielder, will step to the plate. There are two different Albers representing Lanesville in two different sports today. His sister, a starter as a freshman on a softball team that is rated sixth in the state. 
I got to see them play earlier this year. Uh, I believe it was their first game of the year against West Washington, and the Lanesville Lady Eagles definitely can play some softball. Quick toss back. And Lanesville in softball has lost twice so far this year. Once to Corden, once to Charlestown. The softball sectional is played here at Correct. West Washington. And the Senators, of course, have won it each of the last two years. Count it 2-0. Oh. Which the plan is to bring all of the games of that sectional to uh, IHSAATV.org. So, um, you know, if you're looking to tune in, we're planning on bringing all of those games. <laughs> Of course, like you said, Greg, it is three weeks away, so <laughs> things can change, but hopefully all those games will be uh, live. Albers swings away and rolls over top of this one foul. And the count goes to two and one. Jonathan, one of the seniors on this baseball team. Sizable lead. Throw back, gets away, and that could be one base, maybe two. Compton will make it to second. He takes the trot to second. Didn't try to take the extra bag, but that is the second errant throw over towards the first baseman today. Tighten a, a big target over there at 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but you got to get it get it up to him. It, if he's digging it out of the dirt every time, it's going to be a tough play for him over there. Yeah, so E1 which gives the runner at second. Comp the chance to maybe scoring a base hit here. A little high. And the count now three and one. And you can Albers can keep the inning going. C.J. Wiseman will come up after him. You can see the brick dust just blowing off the mound out there. That ball had some nice dip to it. If you're Albers, that's a good take. You weren't going to do anything with that pitch yeah. anyway. <laughs> You've got one more to work with. And the count now runs full at three and two. Could be a problem here. First baseman fields it well. Good job by the pitcher, though, to hustle over in Rosenbaum. Out recorded 3-1, to one, and the inning is over. But Lanesville plates three. They send seven to the plate in their half of the first inning. Senators will come to bat when we come back as you're watching high school baseball here on the IHSAA Champions Network on the West Washington live stream. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for youth. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs and dangerous things like metals into your body. And nicotine, which can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. So the Senators trying to make up a three spot. They gave up to Lanesville in the top of the first inning. Let's bring you now the batting lineup for Dub Dub. Mason Cox, the shortstop, will lead things off, followed by Hayden Morrow, the left fielder, batting second. Clark Nance is the third baseman. He will bat third. Pitcher and Ian Rosenbaum will bat fourth. Eli Haley, the catcher, will bat fifth. Chase Williams, the second baseman, will bat sixth. Cole Timberlake is the DH, hitting again for Williams at first. Alex Williams in right field will bat eighth. And Jackson Cambra, the center fielder, will bat ninth. Pitcher that they will be facing today for the Eagles will be Austin Graves. Austin making his fourth appearance of the season. His ERA at six coming in. The Senators <clears throat> are going to do just about anything they can to get Mason Cox on the base path. He is a speedster in, in just about every sport. Um, you know, was was a... A, a great addition to the football team late in the season, able to, um, you know, return some punts and do some things on kickoff. And then on the Senator basketball team, just a, a water bug all over the place, just a speedster. And, you know, same thing on the baseball field. If he's able to get on base, he's he's always looking to swipe bases. So we'll see how far Graves can go in this game. We mentioned the fact that he has thrown three and two thirds innings. He has allowed Four earned runs, or he's thrown three in appearance, I say he's thrown four and two-thirds innings on the season. He has walked 11 and struck out three. So finding the strike zone will be three his off, first seven, charge in this one. Number seven, Mason Cox. Here's Mason Cox batting 343, seven RBI. Good averages up and down the lineup for Coach Ingram's team. And Graves misses a bit high. 
Noted this in terms of the field, but now you see it with Cox the plate. Both shortstop as well as second baseman for West Washington. They've chosen to go with sweatshirts <laughs> underneath, and they're the lead, they're the two leadoff hitters as well. Left fielder did it too. But there are some sweatshirts under the gear today. It is that level of wind that we are dealing with and that level of chill. Yeah, it's it's definitely chilly. That ball popped up out to right. Albers seems to have a beat on it and does a good job of fundamentally putting that second hand <laughs> up there to back that one up. I can hear his dad, Jeremy, instructing him well, on that I, one. There's one away. I'm sure Coach Booby wants him to do that, too. That, there's no doubt on that. On a day like today with the wind blowing, you know, lots of things can happen when that ball gets up in the air. It's Aiden Morrow, 294 on the season. He's got six runs batted in for the left fielder. See, when I played, it was in the turtleneck era where we would have the turtlenecks <laughs> yeah. underneath the, oh, yeah. on, for, for the long sleeves. And you see some who have on a – I think there was one on West Washington that had on a, a – I don't know that it was a turtleneck, but it was the, the three-quarter length sleeve. 2-0 the count. And now the outfielders for Lanesville have kind of figured out, yeah, you're, you're almost playing kind of deep second and short today. <laughs> yeah. Which really changes a lot of the, the movement that you have because when you're playing deeper, you've got more of a, a rounded approach at getting two balls. When you're in this close, it's got to be a straight line. Late decision to swing. And I will tell you this, if the hitter was fooled there, catcher was too because his target <laughs> was above his belt. Yeah. And that ball landed the shoelaces of, of the hitter. Kind of two and two. Hopped that one. And the count runs full now. Nice job by Morrow there to watch that one work a little deeper in this count. And that one never threatened the zone. Ball four. So a one-out walk. Both teams picking up at least one free pass in their half of the first. Here's Clark Nance. Third baseman, number eight, Clark Nance. I always find it interesting, the walk-up songs that these young men choose. Well, <clears throat> Clark probably gets a, a first-hand pick since his dad's the one that is uh, playing them. And can change it more frequently. It's in for a strike. Just respecting the fact he picked a song that, you know, is 50-something years old <laughs> at this point. <laughs> hey, a little Hendrix to walk up to. That is a, a Clark Nance uh, forte, I would say. Count is 0-1. And this one hopped to home plate. Good job to block that one by Lanesville's catcher in Hubler. Lance batting 395, seven runs batted in. Sizable lead at first for Morrow. Runner goes. Throw down. Hubler, good looking throw, but once he hit that grass, the Breaks are applied on that one. And again, frankly, the catchers are throwing into yeah, a wind throwing today, into too. a wind that's going to deaden everything. You're going to see a lot of base runners looking to move around with a stolen base today. And just like the Eagles did in the top of the first, the Senators are going to play some small ball trying to get around the bases. Got it two and two. Nance took a strike in the previous pitch, basically knowing – yeah. He felt the runner had the base stolen, so he was going to take one for the team and give him that extra bag. And now try to knock him in with a base hit here. It's the second baseman for Lanesville that is trying to keep the runner somewhat close to second. Just a bit high. Three and two. That one's tough to watch. <laughs> Protect the plate a little more. There was kind of a quick glance toward the Lanesville dugout, so there might have been at least a just a – a little high, a little off, just to yeah. kind of gauge exactly where the zone is on that. Full count. High hopper. Second baseman charged it properly, but forgot one very important thing. The ball. <laughs> you got to field it, and you got to – that one may have even been a hard one to get out because of the slow hop that it took once it hit the grass. And again, we are in that April and May stretch where – just like at home, your yard is as thick as it's going to be all year <laughs> long. Same thing happens for baseball fields as well. And the maintenance crew does a great job here taking care of the field. So, so E4, 
Here's Rosenbaum. The pitcher can help himself out here. He's batting north of 300. Ten runs batted in and sprays that one foul. We'll see exactly how aggressive West Washington is in terms of that runner at first, knowing you've got your cleanup hitter at the plate. In other words, you may just let him kind of do his job, and if you're Lanesville, anything on the ground, you are likely looking at second base before you do anything else, conceding that run from third. Runner does go. They will throw through. Shortstop, though, peeled off the bag. The stolen base is there at second. Ball got away from the pitcher, but first baseman was in alert the, enough to go track it down. In the vicinity, we'll say. There you go. <laughs> now it's second and third. Now Rosenbaum has two out there that he can drive in. If he can get one into a gap here, it's going to take a, a good strong swing to get it into the gap. But Smacks it. Center fielder slips over his head. So that will plate two. Rosenbaum will head into second base. That throw was an errant one. They may have had to play at second. Well, either way, he was going to get an RBI out of that. But when the center fielder lost his footing, that made it that an easy double. And it's 3-2 in favor of Lanesville. Rosenbaum got a hold of that one and was able to drive it. That may be the hardest hit ball we see all day, just you know, making contact and driving it straight out there into the wind. So first base hit for West Washington. Here's Haley. Haley batting 231 for RBI. Hubler tried to frame that as best he could, but home plate umpire wasn't having it. Ball one. Runner takes off. Throw down the third, and even if that ball had been picked up cleanly by the third baseman, he had that one stolen off the pitcher. Yeah, he he was got a walking lead there and was able to swipe third without much of a throw. It, the, the catcher did a nice job of making it look close, but I don't know that it was as close as it looked. That's three different players now with stolen bases here for the Senators in the bottom of the first. This one rattles the cage. <laughs> Superintendent uh, Nance next to me dodged that one. That was see, coming I, through the I window. I wasn't going to say a word. <laughs> What happens in the press box stays in the press box. <laughs> Count goes to two and one. I had to get that one out there because I'm going to jump at one, I'm sure. <laughs> Make it three and one now. Infield in with just the runner at third base for the Eagles. This one, wild pitch, gets away. Catcher can't find it. And with that, that's an easy score. And runner at home plate is told, hey, first base is yours. In other words, he could have even had second, frankly, <laughs> yeah. on that one if if he had been going. <clears throat> the catcher had a hard time seeing that one once it bounced where it was going. And the pitcher had to come all the way in and get that ball after the catcher blocked it. So, um. so four straight batters now have reached. And Brendan Booby out to talk to his sophomore hurler today. And he was making his fourth appearance of the season, but has thrown now exactly five innings on the year. <laughs> and during that time, he has unfortunately out 14 walks. So control has been an issue for Graves as he is learning on the job. Well, and this is not the easiest of conditions to come and no. pitch in either. So, you know, it's not a not a nice 70-degree day out here with no Chase wind. <laughs> Here's Chase Williams. Williams batting 381, has seven runs batted in this year. So Lanesville batted seven in their half of the first inning. This is batter six for the Senators. Good throw back, and it's exactly where we want that throw to be. You want to put it runner side of the bag at the first baseman's an ankles. You are literally leading that throw into a swipe tag. And there's the lefty playing first base for Lanesville. And this one sprayed foul. I don't know if we would call this double play depth for the Eagles right now, but I would. <laughs> they're halfway in between, I guess you would say. 
thinking there might be a bunt involved here, but I remember what the third baseman is thinking, but Williams is batting 381, so I'm not sure he's thinking about laying one down. A little high is that one. Count goes to two and one. For Lanesville, they are off the next couple of days. They will play a conference game at New Washington coming up on Thursday. Weather will be significantly better when that game <laughs> takes place. Guarantee Come it. Thursday, runner goes. Throw down and into the short side of the bag. And yet again, that wind just knocks everything down today. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to throw anybody out today. So without having to move a runner around, Mason Bett is now a fourth consecutive runner in scoring position for the Senators. We see some action going on down in the Eagles' bullpen. And ball four. That's the third walk of the inning by Graves, and here comes Cole Timberlake. Timberlake is the DH. He's batting 438. Has a run batted in as well. Pretty good numbers for a uh, DH there. Number 37, Cole. Timberlake. Timberlake can focus on swinging the lumber today. And he is hitting for the first baseman for the Senators. Once you struggle to find that home plate to early batters, that strike zone seemingly yeah. shrinks a little bit. When we saw Ian Rosenbaum the same thing on the Senator side, he wasn't able to find it early and then did better as the inning progressed. Reaches out and lifts this one. Center fielder, left fielder, center fielder's got it. Left fielder was trying to call the center fielder off, and you should never do that. Nope. Center fielder always has the uh, right of way out yeah. there and able to make the play. There's two down. Center fielder is the captain out there in, in center field, and when he calls for a ball, it's his. You don't call him off of that one. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if he's going right or left. There's Alex Williams. Right fielder batting 211 with eight runs batted in on the season. Swing and a miss. He was looking to drive one out there like Timberlake just did, which I'm not sure is the, the game plan for Alex Williams here. Turns on this one. Pops it up. Third baseman drifting, wind pushing it. Good job by Lanesville to field that one. And that is Matt Compton that got the third out of the inning for the Eagles. But both teams put up three in their half of the first. And we're tied after one to the top of the second we go as you're watching on the West Washington live stream on the IHSAA Champions Network. American Family Insurance is a Bedford-based business with a wide variety of insurances that are suited to the customer's needs. There is currently a discount driving program that can help you save money on auto insurance premiums. Contact us at 812-578-3072 or email us at mlong at amfam.com. American Family Insurance. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Rosenbaum on for his second inning of work for the Senators. Greg, talk a little bit about the ISC network and what you guys do up in up in Indian, really all over the state. So the ISC Sports Network, we are one of Indiana's leading producers of high school and college and semi-pro, minor <laughs> Every, league. Everything. <laughs> you need producing, we'll do it for you on ISC. So we work with schools like Marion University, the University of Indianapolis, a lot of high schools, Carmel High School, largest high school in the state, as well as the Metropolitan Scholastic Conference to produce events. So, for example, this weekend we had the Hoosier Reunion Classic in Knightstown at the famous Hoosier Gym. Also involved in streaming the Women's Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame Banquet and produced Indianapolis Indians Baseball on Saturday night. Now, yesterday was our first rain out of the season <laughs> in three home stands for the Indianapolis Indian. So, 8 one coming up this time through. C.J. Wiseman, the left fielder. He's batting a buck 48 with two runs batted in. So 
Eight, nine, and one for Lanesville. Two errors providing some of the damage for the Eagles. That hits the outside corner for a strike. And usually in the top of the second, when you see eight, nine, and one, you're thinking, wow, that game got a little bit out of hand, but both teams are in the same position. <laughs> And the weather probably has a lot to do with it today. Now, Lanesville played a 13-10 game on Thursday, and this has the earmarks of being just like that this time around. Count now at one and one. That's in for a strike. West Washington will be back at it again tomorrow. And they host Christian Academy. And they'll play two at Mitchell coming up on Thursday. Ground ball, fair ball, third baseman knocks it down. Still has time and got him by a step. Good job to recover by the third baseman. That's Clark That's Nance. Well done. And there's <clears throat> one away. Does a nice job throwing all the way across the diamond to that big target over there at first in Titan Williams. Here's Jeremy Guffey, the second baseman. <clears throat> Guffey, a freshman, batting a buck 58. Has a run batted in on the year. We referenced Mitchell that West Washington will play two out against on Thursday. A, the weather forecast is beautiful for that. But B, Mitchell number three in 2A in the coaches' poll last week. This one bunted up and over the support. Talk about a beautiful facility. West Washington does a great job. Mitchell just put in a new baseball uh, field there, and it looks amazing. Fouled straight back. I can't think about Mitchell without thinking about the old Carpenter bus factory. <laughs> and I realize it's been gone for quite some time at this you're, point. You're dating yourself just a little bit. I'm old. <laughs> so I'm middle-aged. That's okay. Count as 0-2. But there would be a certain trick we'd pull every year when driving by Mitchell as that misses. So in those days, Bob Knight would have his open practice over fall break and like every high school basketball team in the state would attend an IU practice. Then we'd all do damage at the Golden Corral in Bedford after the practice was over. This one popped up. First baseman giving chase and makes the grab. Nice snag over there by Titan Williams. Good job by Williams, and there's two away. All the pop flies have been handled very well by both teams so far today. But to finish the thought, we'd always trick a new kid every year going, man, look at the size of that high school. As you saw, school bus, <laughs> school after, bus after school, school bus, bus at Carpenter. We had to tell one kid it was Carpenter High School. But he believed us. <laughs> the rest of us would laugh on the bus on the, on the way up there. And then it was the story for the rest of the year that you tricked a kid. Nah. We let him live in shame pretty, pretty yeah. peacefully with it. <clears throat> Hall looking at that one. Just missed on the inside corner. Hall hit a pop-up to second. Lanesville had six consecutive batters reach, or five rather, with three of them scoring in the top of the first. It's in for a strike, one and one the count. Of course, Mitchell also known for being the birthplace of Gus Grissom. And these days, Chase Briscoe, the name that comes yeah. to mind. In fact, I saw the billboard on 37 on the way into town, <laughs> recognizing him driving for Tony Stewart Racing. Count goes to two and one. Which Tony Stewart, pretty famous in this neck of the woods too, just being up the road. Pretty much the entire state, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Hall takes again. Count goes to three and one. And outfield playing the leadoff man to pull. Hall batting 242 on the season with six runs batted in. He was taken on that one at three and one and kind of nodded. And a good pitch, and he'll see if he can get a similar pitch to hit as the count goes full. Now we miss a shot. So a two-out walk and as the third walk issue. And that's where, bomb so far. that's where both teams get in trouble when they get somebody on base because it's so hard today to throw anybody out. It's almost like just a walk turns into a double. So here's Guernsey. Walked and scored. To the first baseman. No movement on pitch one. Guernsey was taken. That's in for a strike. Now, one thing difference for Rosenbaum from inning two to inning one, he is 
working much more from ahead of the hitters. Yeah. He was getting behind hitters in the first inning. Well, I'm sure Coach Ingram talked to him, hey, you've got to get out ahead of them. You know, If you're working from behind, you're not going to be in the game very long. Runner goes, and Guernsey mad, not because he didn't get the bunt down. I think because he didn't get it. He didn't pull the bat back to try to give <laughs> yeah. the runner second base. So it's 0-2. If runner's going to go again here. Not this time. Swing and a miss. Oh, foul ball. Got a piece. Got a piece. Stay alive. We see Mason Cox out there at short with his hood up now. Not only does he have the sweatshirt on underneath, he's got the hood up. I don't blame him. <coughs> Forecast is for a little better tomorrow. Maybe a little more, a few more rain showers to to dodge, but I know Wednesday through Sunday looks absolutely spectacular. Runner goes. Again, foul tip. I know it feels about 72 and, you know, as sunny as we can get in here There's right now. There's four people <laughs> that are enjoying this game, that are enjoying the tropical climbs <laughs> of the Claude Seacombs press box. Two of them that you hear on the broadcast. That one misses high and Basically, they give Hall second base. Their focus will be on the batter. So the count now at one and two. Scoreboard flickered, unfortunately. But the count is one and two. Strike three called, yep. Not sure what Gerns was looking for. Didn't think maybe that would get as much of the play as it did, but no doubt that is a strike. That is a backwards K, and that is the first strikeout authored by either pitcher today. So a zero on the board for Lanesville. We go to the home half of the second. Senators and Eagles are tied at three. As you're watching on the West Washington live stream. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and talking. adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. So Lanesville will make a pitching change in number two and Dayton Campbell. We'll be the pitcher now for Lanesville. Both both starting pitchers have gone, I would say, fairly deep into their pitch count for only, you know, going uh, an inning, an in, well, two innings for Rosenbaum and an inning and a half, um, you know, for Lanesville. And probably can't say it enough, the weather has so much to do with it, you know, not, not to take anything away from any pitcher out there today, but it's a struggle to throw – to throw it straight with the way the wind is blowing, more or less to throw it in the strike zone. You think West Washington would take it easy on Dayton today? It is his 16th birthday. <laughs> if you would have told, Pro probably not. If no? you would have told okay. Coach Ingram that before, maybe, but now it may be too, too late. Too late. Okay. <laughs> Nine, one, and two. Cameron, the center fielder. I think 375. First pitch. A little more pop than we saw from Graves. That one just missed on the inside corner. Had the pleasure of going to school with both Dayton's mom and dad at Lanesville <laughs> High School. Dayton's dad, pretty good baseball player himself. Well, and that's what you were talking about before the broadcast started, that the uh, – Bunt put down foul, one and two. That a lot of 
adults from Lanesville have brought their kids back to Lanesville, yep. even if they're not in the area. Still, Well, they're still in the area, maybe not in that school district, but still bringing their kids back to Lanesville. When I have that similar experience they had over the years. One, two pitch. A little. Oh, got it. Got the top of the corner. That might be a little bit high, but again, when you're around the strike zone, yeah. as he was those first three pitches, yep. you get the benefit of the doubt, and there's one away. I saw a post on, I believe it was Twitter, talking about the girls' um, basketball team and how all of them had, you know, relatives and things that had gone to Lanesville prior to, um, you know, them being at Lanesville and all of them. You can read the back of my sweatshirt that says homegrown <laughs> as I'm wearing that yeah. shirt today. Yep. This one charged in the center field against center fielder, was playing in, drifting back. And, again, the park is going to hold everything today. <laughs> The park is as big as the county because of, the, of this win. Just a matter of, as a center fielder, are you playing too far in where you can't go back and yeah. get it? Good job to drift back and get that by haul. And in the blink of an eye, there's two down. Well, and even to put even more onto that, you know, Coach Ingram was hitting uh, infield with a fungo and couldn't get them to the outfield. So <laughs> that's telling you how hard that wind is blowing. So Morrow walked, stole the base, and scored. That was a familiar refrain in the – Inning for the Senators. Count it 0 1. Off speed misses. Count level at a ball and a strike. Fifteen in uniform today for the Eagles, twelve for the Senators in today's game. Curveball misses high. Count goes to two and one. Senators have another couple of players who are injured and not going to be able to play today. That does graze the corner, kind of two and two. For Campbell, this is his fourth appearance of the season. His ERA 4.2. He has thrown five innings so far on the year. Working quickly, and the count runs full. Lanesville um, has done a nice job with their pitchers. You know, they've they've rotated them, rotated in players who you know don't have a whole lot of innings of experience and today's not a bad day to get some experience ball four i think you said their starting pitcher had about four innings yep to start off and this one has five so you know great day to get those guys some some innings and in some adverse Sanders. conditions there are some days we're gonna have an all staff day <laughs> that, that's probably one of those days today yep so here's clark nance Air on the second baseman on a Chopper over the pitcher's head. Stole the base and scored back in the first inning. Good move by Campbell. Got that ball quickly over to first base. I think with two outs, you would expect the Senators to be aggressive in the base pass just to get the runner in scoring position. Given where Hubler is setting up, I was thinking that might be a, a pitch out coming and something that Campbell's got away with, he frankly crossed up the catcher and still got the strike. You <laughs> yeah. don't often get that. Yep. Catcher was set up outside. He hit the inside corner. Home plate umpire. Again, was it, was it was a strike? Yeah, absolutely it was. Now the runner goes. Now the runner swings, and or the batter swings rather, and times that one perfectly. Sends it to where the shortstop normally would have been. Perfect hit and run here by the Senators. And there's runners on the corners now with two down. Great job there by the Senators to get runners on the corner, on the corners for Ian Rosenbaum to come up, who drove in two, I believe, the last time he was up and now, scored a run. Now Rosenbaum smacked one to center field. The center fielder in for Lanesville and Hall stumbled. It would have been produced an RBI. Worst case scenario, there was a sacrifice fly to right. center. What an outer RBI regardless, because the center fielder stumbled. He drove in two. A little safety squeeze that time. Just maybe to give the pitcher something to think about. The count goes to 0-1. Third baseman is playing even with the bag. And, and Compton with the runner at third base. We did see West Washington in a similar scenario. Have the runner at first base and Nance steal a bag in the last inning again against a different pitcher. The runner goes. They will not – well, they were supposed to have that ball cut off by the pitcher. <laughs> Campbell seemed to wasn't in on that plan yeah, as he Cam got out Campbell of the way. Campbell got out of the way of that one, or it was going to hit him right in the shin. 
So by my tally, that is a fifth stolen base of the day already for West Washington. That is with 12 batters that have completed an at-bat. Just off the corner, 2-1 and one the count. So again, if Rosenbaum can get this one into the outfield and have it not be caught, he's got two more RBI sitting in front of him. Yeah. Ball got away from the catcher. Runner going to try to score. Is there a play at the plate? Tag. Safe. Got it underneath the tag. Nice slide there by Hayden Morrow to get underneath the tag. It's not a very surface. Like we'll call that a pass ball. But it's 4-3 West Washington. And of note, that surface right home plate, that is, that's not dirt. <laughs> kind of that combination turf surface to maintain the integrity of the batter's box area around home plate. And it is hard. <laughs> Especially on a cold day. Yeah. Count runs full now at three and two as Rosenbaum swings and misses at that one. And hop to home plate, ball four. Catcher and Hubler stays in front of it. With all of this now with two outs, the damage being done here by West Washington. Senators back with runners on the corner again, so we're going to see what the Senators do here to play some small ball and see if they can get both runners in scoring position. Here's Haley. Haley walked and stole a base his last time up. Runner again takes off. Campbell will... Step off the mound. Now they try to pick the runner off at third, and they got him. Good recognition by Campbell. Never even looked at first. He just stepped off the back, yeah. caught the runner at third, napping, and the inning is over. Senators don't do score one. They'll take a 4-3 lead to the top of the third, as you're watching on the West Washington live stream and the IHSAA Champions Network. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. 9421 or just visit our website. So hard of the lineup coming up through for the squad at Lanesville. Payne Hubler. It was Graves' spot in the lineup. There was no DH being used by Lanesville, so Campbell would be due up then third for the Eagles. Talk a little bit about the uh, Hall of Fame induction that you guys were able to do so we're lucky enough on ISC that we get to uh, partner with the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame to televise and stream their induction banquets. And they do two separate ones. They have a men's induction banquet that is the Wednesday before the state finals every year. So that was on Wednesday, March 22nd. The women's Hall of Fame banquet usually is the last Saturday in April. I'm fortunate to be able to serve as the MC for the men's event. Rita Price Simpson herself, she has been doing... Radio in Warsaw on WRSW for six decades. She is one of two female members of the Indiana Sports Writers and Sports Casters Hall of Fame. She handles the MC duties for the women's event, and that took place on Saturday night. Leading off the top third inning for the Eagles. And that not only <clears throat> not only do you do that, but you do the Hall of Fame Classic at Newcastle, which Correct. is where the Hall of Fame is located, um, someplace that's near and dear to my heart, uh, being a graduate of Newcastle. So, um you know, but definitely an honor for you to be able to do all oh, of those things with them. Payne pops that one foul. Count goes to 0-1. And if people could imagine the gymnasium at West Washington and multiply that by about six, <laughs> you would get the world's largest and finest high school field house. At Newcastle Chrysler field house, as it was known back in the day. That was a swing and a miss by Payne. Counted 0-2. Although, i got to say, Senator Sam's doing a good job of taking care of, of the building next door. Got to enjoy the girls' regional here back on February the 11th. Enjoyed my time here in Washington County. And that that's kind of the start of how this whole <laughs> whole thing worked out. You sent out a tweet, and it just so happened that I was looking at it while you were tweeting it. I said, hey, come over and, and talk to us a little bit. And you, you did, and then graciously um, accepted the invitation to come down and do do a baseball game. So Count goes to two and two.
Payne was ducking and ducked underneath that one. That ball had some serious drop on it. He thought that was going to be at his noggin. It did fall into the strike zone. Frankly, the pitch before wasn't <laughs> far from being yeah. called the same. Second time around, Rosenbaum got it, and there's one away. And Coach Booby's not very happy with the way that that hole at bat went. He was giving words all the way back to the dugout. And especially that's your best hitter. Yeah. You know, you're you're going to give him a, a little more not leeway on that one. This one quickly knocked by Hubler back to the pitcher, and apparently the first baseman <laughs> can sit this one out. Rosenbaum will run it all the way over to first base, and there's two away. He's not going to take the uh, – <clears throat> have an issue getting it out of his glove and flipping it and making a catch. He'll just run it the rest of the way. So here's Dayton Campbell. So Campbell gets his first at bat of the game. He's hitting a buck 90 on the season. Does have a double and a couple of RBI. He's in for a strike. I have to ask... Dayton's dad, why he's not wearing his dad's number. His dad's number was 23 <laughs> in high school. Dayton's going with 25. Somebody else had that number 25 when his dad played. I was going to say, probably sitting next to me. Yep, yep. <laughs> I would always try to find the biggest jersey they had. That was generally a, a good idea for me. Count goes to 2-1. and one. So in this spot last time, Graves, who pitched the first inning, drew a walk and then got involved in the double steal that played at the as of now is the third and final run for Lanesville. And three in the first for the Eagles, three in the first for the Senators, and one more in the home half of the second. Got the outside corner. He had a pitch to work with. Count runs full now at three and two. Rosenbaum settling in after his first inning struggles. That one got away from him, though. Campbell works the walk. So in the last two innings, that has been the sole source of base runners for Lanesville. And for Rosenbaum, he has now walked four in today's game. So here's Matt Compton. Compton had a wind-aided single. <laughs> Not that it was misplayed by the right field anyway. Literally, the ball just got, just got knocked down by that breeze in right field. Campbell will return to the dugout. Courtesy runner. He can then focus his attention on what he needs to do in the bottom half of the third. Alex Williams, the right fielder, remembered that because the first thing he did was take about three steps towards the line uh, when the Lanesville batter came up. Landon Ovington is the courtesy runner and proceeds to steal a base standing up. So for Lanesville now, we've referenced the fact that Wes Washington has Five stolen bases in this game. Eagles now have four. And this one sprayed foul. First baseman will chase. And again, frankly, you should always do that, but especially because you have no idea yeah, where the wind's going to move a ball. And that hitting it towards first is blowing into the wind, so it can stop it and push it back. To try to give you an idea, and obviously you see the one camera we have behind home plate, but try to give you an idea on depth perception. These fielders would be in play if we were playing on the softball field right yeah. now. That's oh, yeah. how close they are to the infield. Well, it kind of slipped out of the hands of Rosenbaum. Just not a day that you're going to be able to get a, a you know, hard hit to the outfield because the wind's going to knock it down or blow it somewhere. Good news for the batters, though, is that we have seen a, a couple of foul pop-ups, but on those ones that are pops right up around home plate, one's going to take that and get it out of play and give you at least one more pitch to hit. Yeah. Count it one and two. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Compton saw it coming, could not do anything with it. And while Rosenbaum has walked four, he has also now struck out three. And we go to the home half of the third. The Senators enjoying a 4-3 lead as you're watching the West Washington live stream on the IHSAA Champions Network. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. 
proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. So back to West Washington High School. Greg Rakestraw, Craig Akers with you on the West Washington live stream. One of the many schools that feature as many athletic events as possible on the IHSAA Champions Network. You've been very gracious to kind of ask me a question coming out of, of each half an inning, so I'll, I'll ask you one. You've also had a chance to broadcast a lot of because of the great facilities you guys have here, the amount of postseason events you host. What has it been like for you getting a chance to uh, broadcast some of these sectional, regional, and, and games beyond that in the state tournament? So it's it's really interesting how, how West Washington Livestream all happened. Um, you know, we had a, a very strong run at football two years in a row. Um, I had been streaming some stuff just kind of half productions, I would say, um, at best. And then really kind of got into it, and Heath uh, Shanahan up in Indy asked me, you know, if we were interested in, you know, joining and being part of, and said, you know, definitely. And that year happened to be a year that our football team went to semi-state, and we were one of the few yeah, educational yeah. broadcasters that got to do a semi-state. And then the next year we were able to host semi-state um, for football. So Haley smokes that one. Left fielder couldn't get it. That was over the head of the left fielder. This will be a double for Haley. Just couldn't get a good read on that one. Out in left field for Lanesville was C.J. Wiseman. That is the second extra base hit for Dub Dub, and it was also the first time, even with this 4-3 lead, they have gotten the leadoff man aboard today. Number six, Chase Williams. So we got, I got to do a, a semi-state broadcast two years in a row, which is pretty interesting. Not a whole lot of educational broadcasters get to do that. And then with the facilities that we have, we host, you know, sectional and, and regional um, for basketball every every year, um, whether it's boys or girls. Girls Regional is here, um, has been here for the past three years, so get to do those in our, our friendly confines. Um, you know, so so really interesting, just, just kind of word of mouth got out and had people who were interested and wanted to watch. So that's how, how we kind of got going. Here's Chase Williams. Williams. Lifts this one, right field. Albers lines it up, and good decision by the second baseman. A, it's only the first out, or the runner at second base, I should say. Yeah. A, it's only the first out, and what he doesn't know is that the right fielder also does some pitching. Has a pretty good arm out in the right field. <laughs> well, so. And he's wind-assisted, too, out yep. there. So yep. everything about that was bad. So good decision out there by Eli Haley to stay on second. So here's Cole Timberlake. Timberlake hit a pop-up to left center that Nolan Hall was able to track down. Timberlake, the DH. Batting number seven in the lineup here for West Washington. Well, I will say this about the girls' regional. You were blessed with fantastic crowds. Not exactly great games for the team that you had. <laughs> well, your, your Lady Eagles did a wonderful job there at regional, um, you know, and the Trinity Lutheran Cougars hung with them for three quarters but then just weren't able to to do anything in the fourth that in the semi-state round when they played at new albany you can imagine that with the first year of the new format i got a lot of questions when i was here about hey where are we playing <laughs> next week i can't tell you because i don't know how often do you get asked that with with your inside knowledge of the ihsa and you you know being oh, part get, of the pairing I, show i get asked about draws <laughs> just every once in a while <laughs> Just a couple of times. I actually got to see the pinball machine. Or not the pinball, the, the ping pong, ping -pong ball, machine. ball machine. Good doubles of pinball machine. <clears throat> two and two. The count is Timberlake swings through that one and misses. When I went up, Heath showed that to me. It was in a closet. He said that they were getting ready to move it out and, you know, showcase it more. It is like, basically on display in the studio now at all because <laughs> I was there this morning, so I could, I could vouch for that. Count mm -hmm. of two and two. Popped up. Pitcher comes in. Catcher trying to track it. That's a fair ball. Yep, because he, he, he touched that in fair territory. And and so many times, that's the catcher's play. This may be the one time, yeah, in the one weather not. condition, <laughs> where maybe the pitcher would have a better play. And again, you're, you are taught that's the catcher's yeah. ball. You've got it. But that is next to impossible trying to yep. track that down. So, And frankly, that's the right call by home player. He, he was in fair territory when he touched that, so it's a fair ball. So an error on the catcher is what puts Timberlake at first. Did that clip him? Yep, hit him. So the bases now are full. So 
Williams wears one. And now it's potentially a chance for a big inning here. And we're going to have, looks like a first mound visit with Campbell on the mound. And this may be just as much about kind of what to do from a defensive alignment yeah. standpoint. Talk a little bit about the studio at the IHSA. I got to go up there and see that. It's beautiful, you know, studio that they've got set up. So we've got a couple of different sets at this point. There's the one that you would have seen if you watched the pairing show last night. You would have seen where we use that for softball and baseball. Kind of the secondary set that we will often use for our getting to know you interviews. We interview assistant commissioners and those around the office, and we will film the next batch of those come up here in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but, but frankly, maybe the best example I can give you is that when we did the live draw for the semi-state, for the redraw, uh, basically, myself and Chris May are there at the table that you see for the pairing shows. And other side of the room is the commissioner with the ping pong ball. So and I have a pinch hitter coming up here as Miller will be the pinch hitter. So Miller, a sophomore, four of eight. Reporting to bat for the Senators. And limited plate appearances this year. Tyler Miller. This is Cameron's spot in the lineup. We'll see if he might re-enter in the top of the inning. Tyler Miller with a little more pop in his bat. That's in for a strike. Well, I had a specific request when I shared on Facebook that I was doing the game today from my buddy Kevin Brooks, who for many years was a part of the coaching staff at Corden for football. He said, make sure you give Tyler Miller a shout-out for me. So, Kevin, <laughs> if you're watching, here you go. Here's your opportunity. Kevin, him, Kevin was a pretty fair baseball player in his day before he ended up playing football at Campbellsville University in Kentucky. Kevin had a mean fastball, that was for sure. One and one the count. Squeeze, runners coming. It's going to come back over the top of us. And we are nice and toasty and insulated <laughs> in this press box. We got the windows shut today. That way you're not hearing that gale force wind in yeah. our microphones. We're kind of doing that for both comfort but also clarity of the broadcast. But we didn't have a chance to hear. When you see that runner taking off, like what? what's the code? What, what's, what are you yelling from the dugout to alert the pitcher? Hey, runner's coming. Throw this in a different spot. Don't let him get that down. Miller lifts this when Albers is on the dead sprinting again. Just runs out of time. In a normal scenario, he tracks that down. Good news is, from Lane's perspective, that thing tailed foul. Yeah. And Miller gets one more swing at one and two. Tyler looking to help his team out here by driving in any of these guys out there on the base paths. Miller, in limited plate appearances, does have six runs batted in this year. First and third baseman in. Middle infielders double play depth. Almost. Umpire lifted uh, that yeah, arm. Yeah, he but, wanted to call it. But I would agree. I thought yeah, that one that tailed out of the zone. Just a touch outside. I think his zone's been really good today. Count is two and two. Just off the plate again. Good pitcher's pitches at both one and two and two and two. And now you got to find a corner of the plate here without giving Miller too much to hit. And there's a big hole between short and third. Able to lay off of that one, ball four. Bases loaded, walk and make it 5-3. West Washington now has scored in every inning today. For Miller, that will go down as another RBI. And the same seven, predicament eight, remains for Lanesville. Mason With Mason Cox. Cox to the plate. Mason is 0 for 2. A pair of pop-ups to the outfield. One to right and one to center. Cox. Campbell. First play at home. Made it. That throws a, a little higher up. <laughs> Maybe had to play at first base, but if your worst case scenario is you get the lead runner at home, you did all right if you're laying Just like two we down. talked about in the first inning, if, if you can get an out somewhere, get an out. Don't yeah, let it, the you know, two, don't progress eight, the inning any more four. than you have to. So bases remain loaded. Cox now 0 for 3 with the fielder's choice. And here's Morrow. Morrow has walked twice and scored twice. This time he is looking to produce a run as he swings and misses at the first offering from Campbell. It slipped out of the hands of Campbell. He's trying to deliver that curveball or off-speed pitch towards home. Count at 1-1. One and one. And You're seeing the Senators get big leads off these bases. Well, with the bases loaded, Campbell has gone back to the windup. So with that, 
Everybody's getting about an extra 20 feet off the base pass. Those of you at home, watch Mason Cox. Look at the jump he's getting at first base. And this one sprayed foul. Campbell potentially one pitch away from getting out of a bases loaded jam. This is the seventh bat of the plate this inning for West Washington. They sent eight to the plate in the first. And the count runs full. Well, Graves lasted an inning for Lanesville. Campbell trying to wrap up his second. Runners take off at three and two. Ball four. So a second base is loaded walk of the inning. And it's now 6-3. Now that is your senators, number eight, Clark Vance. So give Morrow an RBI, his seventh of the season. Miller is at third. Cox is at second. And Morrow at first. Nance has a chance to make this game a little bit different. 6-3 and potentially larger is a couple of different conversations. <laughs> Nance we has reached an error and scored and singled his last time up. Both corner outfielders are hugging the lines, which leaves lots of room in the gaps there. See if Nance is taking it 2-0 or thinking about getting a good pitch to hit. He was taken. After a couple of runs have been walked in, that's understandable at 2-0. Well, maybe more of a green light at 2-1. It was taken again, 2-2. Two and two. We saw Campbell a couple of batters ago just missed on 1-2 and 2-2 two, two counts. You're kind of looking for a similar location here at 2-2 two and two with a pitch to work with. Lance went fishing. That is a foul ball. Chopped. <clears throat> chopped foul down the first base line. And obviously you see that as a bit of a catapult when you hit it off of that yeah. more permanent surface around the home plate. Smacked past the shortstop. That'll be a two-run scoring RBI single. Great job there by Clark Nance to drive in two, which makes it eight to three. <coughs> so it is a four run, bottom of the third. Give Nance a pair of RBIs. Although did they, they appealed to home? Yeah. And so here's here's what happened. I I saw it. I was looking at it, marking my scorebook. But what happened is the second runner never touched home plate. So Cox, who would have scored on that one as he was coming in, I don't think he ever touched home plate. That's the, what, what I assume the appeal was going to be there. <laughs> the the umpire down there is telling us to take two off, yet it's down in the dugout. So, so they're going to take both him those in the right runs direction. off? That's what – that's what they're saying. So I, I know I thought the second runner missed the plate. To be to be blunt with you, I did not see the first runner miss home plate. Well, let's go to break. We'll some let's come back and see if we can sort this out a little bit. So the inning is over. West Washington's lead does grow, but by not as many as they would hoped. Back more in a moment to go to the top of the fourth as you're watching on the West Washington live stream. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. So to the top of the fourth we go, and they are going to pull both runs off of that single by Nance. And so again, frankly, I was kind of tracking the ball in left field when the first run scored. But as the second run scored, I didn't have a chance to, you know, I, there wasn't going to be a play at the plate, but I just happened to look up and go, you know, he never touched home plate. <laughs> well, and that's, that's one of those uh, 
the good and the bad of having the permanent surface here, the, the plate doesn't yeah, stick right. up at all. So as a runner, when you run by, you, you don't yeah. have anything to step on. You don't have that tactile sensation. So here's Albers. Albers, I would assume that was a take when he was showing bunt there with nobody on. He had a ground ball to the first baseman that Williams made a nice play on to toss it to Rosenbaum back in the first. Jonathan got fooled on that one, and the count now one and one. Jonathan, a young man that will finish third in his senior class at Lanesville High School. Ground ball, third baseman. Gets a knock it down, so Albers will reach, hustling down the line. Gets a glove on it as Clark Dance, but unable to field it cleanly, so... So leadoff man aboard for Lanesville. That's the first time that has been the case today. And let's see if Albers gets the green light to move up. Wiseman tries to put the bunt down and skies it. Counted 0-1. Wiseman a ground ball to third base his previous time up. And Wiseman is absolutely hovering over the plate. <laughs> Standing right on top of it. He is using every bit of real estate he can in that batter's box. Toss back, but Albers had barely left the first base bag at that time. Albers going now. Wiseman swings and pops it up. Albers will have to retreat, although this could be trouble. Shortstop does make the play, and so Albers will pick up the pace a little bit to get back into first base. But there's one down. Nice job by Mason Cox there to give um, pursuit to that fly ball because that was kind of in no man's land over there behind third base. So here's Jeremy Guffey. Guffey fouled out to the first baseman his previous plate appearance. This marks the second trip through the lineup. Albers goes. Batter swings through, throw down, and again, it's tough for those throws to reach second base because <laughs> of the wind today. And if it doesn't, that grass will just, yeah, just swallow, swallow it up. up. So Albers sits on second. We've seen West Washington steal third once today. Not sure if Lanes will try that. That one popped up. Eli Haley given chase. Guffey put that one on top of the roof above us. Is there a hatch up there to collect foul balls for us? Or it's they just, sloped, so they it just falls go up off. There to, okay, <laughs> so they just go up there to die. Yep. So the count at 0-2. Lanes has got a couple of days to get back to work after this one. West Washington in action tomorrow against Christian Academy. That is also a sectional foe for West Washington. Fouled back. You and I were talking about this earlier. West Washington now is, is kind of more bracketed in with teams in this area from a sectional standpoint. They had been heading up to Edinburgh, Trinity Lutheran, Crothersville, kind of that yeah. group for yep. many years. Especially basketball has, has changed. Um, baseball a little bit, but not, not a Swing whole Swing and a miss. Albers will take third, but he'll do so now with two down. So for Rosenbaum, that'll be his fourth strikeout. Yeah, kind of the alignments, New Washington and Henryville, and Henryville is now back in 1A after being in 2A for many years. They have kind of gone further east, like Rising Sun right. now is, is in with them. The rest of the Southern Athletic Conference kind of comes this direction, and West Washington gets lumped in with that group. Which we were in talking before the broadcast, you know, the enrollment, West Washington's kind of right, in, right on the bubble of that. Well, obviously there's some changes potentially coming in terms of the classifications. That was just a nasty breaking pitch by Rosenbaum. That knuckled in for a strike, one and one the count. There is a proposal to potentially change the classifications through a similar pitch that just kind of broke inside late and missed the plate, two and one the count. Overthrew that one a little bit, left the fingers on it just a touch, a touch too long. That's why it missed outside three and one. 
And there's a proposal to the IHSA about potentially making the classifications based on enrollment, not, say, smallest 100, next 100, et cetera. It's in for a strike. So Hall will see this one go full at 3-2. and two. Well, and it becomes very interesting because it's different, um, you know, for each – each sport also, um, you know, basketball, of course, is the same boys and girls. But then, you know, in 1A especially, you get football in there. It's completely different. And that misses off the plate. So Hall works a walk. There's one of on the corners now. The tying run for Lanesville will come to the plate. And Eli Guernsey. Well, football obviously is completely different. There's about 310, 315 schools that play football. So you have the six classifications in football. This year, for example, for the baseball tournament, 389 schools are participating. That's the most, by the way, that have played in the baseball tournament since 1986. Wow. Not like I have that fact right in front of my lobe <laughs> after doing the show last night. Hall, again, going to try to get the runner to chase him down. Albert's not going anywhere just yet. And then, basically, nobody was covering second base. Cox had kind of drifted over where the runner was, and so... Hall will take the free pass to second. Well, and that was one of those, there's two outs, get the out and get out of the inning. Here's Guernsey. He walked and scored back in the first, struck out looking in the second. Lanesville trying to get one across home plate for the first time since the first inning. And they took a 3 nothing lead. It's in for a strike. Lanesville having a tough time kind of reading those breaking pitches from Rosenbaum. His, his ball has a lot of movement and a lot of spin on it. Ernsey, good job to lay off of that one. They're trying to get this to Payne, who is their best hitter who is on deck. <laughs> Again, he was fooled by that breaking ball his last time up, but right. does also have one of the two hits that Lanesville has had today. This one lifted left field. Left fielder backing up, backing up, and could not make the play. So two runs will score for Lanesville, and it's now 6-5. to five. Nice drive out there, Hayden Morrow. Just gets crossed up, goes back one way, and then tries to turn his hips the other and isn't able to get there and make the catch. Uh, so, Eagles, you have A couple of RBI to Guernsey. And, again, all of the fielders are playing much farther in than they normally would, so even the more conventional plays are a little more difficult right. than they would normally be today. And that's probably about where he would normally play, where that ball was you know, attempted to be caught. So we'll get a second opportunity here. Seems to have a better beat on this one. Yep, no problem as Payne got underneath that one. Pops it up, and the inning is over. But the Eagles draw back within one. We are halfway through this one. It is 6-5 West Washington. Going to the home half of the fourth as you're watching on the West Washington live stream on the IHSAA Champions Network. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Two. So Lanes will go to a third pitcher of the day. This is Matt Compton. He was the third baseman. He and Campbell will simply switch positions. So Campbell will bop over to third, and now Compton goes to the mound. This is the third time he has pitched this year. And he has not given up an earned run in his four innings of work. He does have one of the wins on the season as well for Lanesville. So 6-5 now the score. West Washington at one point thought they had an 8-3 lead. Two runs were pulled off the board for Runners family hit home plate. Lanesville then gets a cup on the top of the fourth, and all of a sudden this is a one-run game. I didn't notice Compton's glove earlier. Do you see that out there? Had the bright blue, yep. yeah. Yeah, that's like a, a teal almost. Well, 
Lights have been on here at this park since the beginning of the game, given kind of the gray nature of the day. And like you said, on your way down, because coming down from Indy, you know, you were in rain up there. Didn't really It sprinkled a little bit, but didn't really rain. It's just been gray all day. And my Twitter feed was full of cancellations all day today. <laughs> Well, when I got the message from you, I, I said, you know, hey, I've I've got the the first call that our AD um, Darren Russell was going to make was to me to make sure you don't make this trip down here for nothing. So I appreciate that. Here's Rosenbaum. He thought he was going to come to the plate with an 8-3 lead last inning. Those runners missed home plate. That was the now end the of the inning. The pitcher number 12, Ian Rosenbaum. So Rosenbaum doubled and scored back in the first was at first when a runner was picked off in the second. This is the third different pitcher he has faced in three different <laughs> at-bats. Waves at that one as it goes by for a strike. Rosenbaum batting 366 in the season coming in. Second verse, same as the first, 0-2 the count. Wind has been unrelenting today. <laughs> That, that is an understatement. Kind of wanted to. The flag out in center field has stood out straight out the whole time we've been playing, and even before it was straight out. So Foul tip. We'll do it again. Rosenbaum, Haley, and Williams, the trio do up. There are three different Williams in the lineup today for West Washington. Well, it's Chase Williams who is due up this time through. Two and two. We see Lanesville shortstop out there jumping up and down, trying to stay warm in this wind. This one lifted. Left fielder has a beat on that one. It's Wiseman. Does a good job to, again, put his entire body behind the ball and line it up. Both hands on it. Don't let it come out of the glove. There's one away. So here's Haley. Number 11, Eli Haley. Doubled his last time up. And we come around to score. Walked in the first as well. So he has yet to been retired as an out today. He, too, seeing a third different pitcher. Off the hands, Payne, one hop, takes his time, and good job by Guernsey to rise up and track that one down. And for just the second time in four innings, the first two batters are retired for West Washington, and they have scored in every inning so far. That definitely speeds up the game quite a bit when, you know, the first two um, batters go down. Here's Williams. Fly ball to right. Albers made the play on that one his last time up. There has not been a 1-2-3 inning for either side in this game today. And there won't be on this one either. <laughs> as that one was hit by a pitch. and Williams scampers on down to first base. That one was right to you. You could have caught that one. I don't have the speed that I used to. I still have my first baseman's hands. I, I was all <laughs> over it. Not that I had speed back then either. So here's Timberlake. That's where you could have got by with it. You could have told everybody that you had speed and nobody no, would have known. No, no, no. <laughs> Timberlake popped up, and the catcher, and Hubler, again, dropped it. And, again, it's on a windy day today. That's a very tough play, but. Did hit his glove in fair territory. And we have seen runners being active all day with two outs. You would think the same would hold true for Williams here. Foul ball off the inside of the foot of Timberlake. That never feels good, but especially on a day that's in the 50s. Yeah. You can tell that one hurts. He's pretty gingerly stepping on that foot now. He says he's all right. Counted 0-2. Timberlake bats for the first baseman. And Titan Williams. Sizable lead for Chase Williams at first. 
He goes. Throw down. Short stop. Tag applied. No. Got underneath the tag. Another stolen base. A bang bang play out there. Nice. Yeah, that was by far the closest play we've had at second yeah. base on a steal. But base's umpire did a great job of moving to get in a position to get the best look at that. And while the throw might have beaten the runner of the bag, he said that he slid underneath the tag. It's a runner in scoring position here for the Senators. Does not matter. Swing and a miss. And for the first time, a zero goes on the board for the Senators today. But home team still has a 6-5 lead as we go to the top of the fifth. As you're watching on the West Washington live stream here on the IHSAA Champions Network. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. So back here at West Washington, Greg Rakestraw, Craig Akers with you. Here on the IHSAA Champions Network, the West Washington live stream. The reason I am being somewhat deliberate is that I am reading an IHSA press release about a topic we discussed a, a couple of innings ago to make sure I am giving proper <laughs> proper information. Right. In other words, we talked about potentially the reclassification. That proposal has been tabled. In other words, it won't be changed. Uh -huh. So how schools are classified will not be changing. And the proposal that was out there was to have four classes, but to basically have 4A be 1,400 and up to about 68 schools would be that number. Then 600 to 1,400 would have been the 3A classification. 325 to 600 would have been 2A. And 325 and under would have been 1A, but that has been tabled for now. I'll read more in the next half inning. This one, hit well hit, but center fielder is there, and again, had to <laughs> had to adjust for the win. That was Jackson Cameron out there. Able to stay upright was Cameron to make the play, and there's one away. That was Hubler, the catcher, that, again, that's as hard hit as the ball the Lanesville has had today. Just hit it directly at a player. And the classifications may seem easy, you know, to people out there who, who don't have um, all of the, the information of what goes into that, but that's a huge undertaking to, to reclassify schools in different places. Basically what, what it is now is that, again, in the four-class sports, you're looking at about 100, 102 member institutions per school or, or you know, per, per classification. Campbell worked the walk his last time up, his – First plate appearance of the day. Came in in the second. Graves was a starting pitcher. Campbell came in and pitched the next two. Now he's playing third base. Was taken. And that's inside for a ball. And we are in the first year of a two-year classification cycle anyway. So the group you're in with this year will be in with next year, regardless what happens. And that's ball four. Campbell will hustle down to first base. Well, and... And in moving one school out of a sectional to a different sectional, throws wrenches in yep. lots of different places. <laughs> I don't, I don't envy those guys who who set up those at all. There's Compton. Compton struck out looking to end the third. Now the pitcher for Lanesville through his fifth inning of unearned run action on the mound. This is his third appearance of the year. He's thrown four innings. Gave up two runs. Both of those were unearned earlier this year. ZRE is zero going into the bottom half of the fifth inning. Good job by Haley to snag that one on a short hop, but 
Rosenbaum doing something now that we haven't seen since the first inning where he's getting behind batters again. And the count goes to 2-0. and You see Compton look down. He doesn't wear the wristband, but he has it basically in his back pocket. So instead of Brendan Booby kind of going through signs in the third base coaching back, he's going to spit out numbers. And yep. Players know exactly what's going on. Compton swinging through is Compton to – that's a fair ball. That's – that's a mistake by the third baseman. Yeah, you let that one roll. And Correct. Yeah, it literally, get foul. it was heading foul, and if he doesn't touch it, it's a foul ball. But he played it right on top of the fair foul line, so that is going to be an infield single for Compton. And then we get a courtesy runner coming in for Compton as the pitcher. So the tying run is at second base for Lanesville. Ovington. Ovington is the courtesy runner, so Compton can focus on his. Activities on the mound, and now here is Albers, a chance potentially tie this game or drive in a go-ahead run. Swing and a miss. Hold his head that time on the off-speed pitch. Albers reached on an error and scored his last time up for Lanesville. Also stole the base as well. Yeah, that one had some late break to it, and you touched on it. His, his ball really has a lot of movement on <laughs> yeah. it. Kind of broke almost, almost too late to get the plate, but it certainly moved. Kind of was one and one. Albers is a lot of between first and second. He put it on the ground that direction. Rosenbaum not liking what he's seeing at second. Does deliver home, and again, that – his entire timing is yeah, off because of the runner at second base. That's one of those where he's better off just stepping off yep. the, the back of the mound and resetting. But now, Lanesville has the go-ahead run in scoring position. And the count is 2-1. and one. And you could just see it in everything he was doing. He was looking all over the place. He was looking back at second, looking down, looking back at second, looking at the catcher. And that just threw his rhythm all off. That missed three and one. It is Wiseman's spot that is due up next for Lanesville. Eagles have four hits in today's game. And Albers draws a walk. So now the bases are loaded. Rosenbaum going to see a mound visit here. The first time we have seen that from the West Washington staff today. Back to the alignment that you were talking about, the proposed alignment, you know, making sure that the schools are evenly dispersed through the four classes of, of um, sports are, is very important. But then you also look at, you know, football, you throw that in there. Um, and y then you have the, the single class sports, you know, with, with swimming and, and wrestling and, um, you know, all of those. There are so many different alignments for schools. You know, some schools can have sports go three or four different ways for a sectional, you know, just depending on the, the enrollment category that they fall in. Now the Eagles, number three, I know Floyd Central, who's close down here, has a couple of different sectional ways that they go. So just depending on the, on the sport that they're in. So here's Wiseman. With bases loaded, infielders in at the corners, trying to take a potential bunt away from Wiseman. He's showing it anyway. It's a safety squeeze. He pops it up, and that's a problem. So that will be two. They'll throw back, and it is a double play that will end the inning, and nobody will score for Lanesville. It was a squeeze play, and if you're going to get that bunt, you have to find somehow some way to get it down. Wiseman did not do it, and it is a double play that ends the inning. So with that, we'll go to the bottom half of the fifth. It is 6-5, West Washington leading Lanesville here on the West Washington live stream on the IHSAA Champions Network. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for youth. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs and dangerous things like metals into your body. And nicotine, which can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. 
With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. One. So to the bottom half of the fifth we go. Lanes will have the bases loaded with one out, but trying to manufacture a run with the squeeze play with the runner barreling from third to home in Campbell. Wiseman could not get the bunt down, popped it straight up, and, and he is basically a sitting duck. There's no play that's going to be made back to third base. So to the bottom of the fifth we go. It is now 6-5 in favor of the Senators. Now they have the this is a game where why thought they had run 7-8 scored, but and apparently a couple of runners miss stepping on home plate. Now the bunt put down successfully. Great job by Compton. Compton literally re he realized that the first baseman was right next and trying to make a play. <laughs> and nobody at first. Yeah, the second baseman was hustling over to get there in Guffey, but Compton knew his best play was just to tag the runner as he went by in Williams. And so the out is recorded, and there's one down. So here's Cameron. And Miller hitting his spot last time. Cameron struck out looking his only other plate appearance. And Compton has come in dealing here for Lanesville. Swing and a miss. Jackson probably known more for his defensive presence out in the field than his offensive. So Average has been solid, though, for Cameron so far this year. Foul tip, and we'll do it again. It may have warmed up just a touch because Mason Cox has his hood down. So. <laughs> <laughs> West Washington, their last two games coming into this one, beating Crawford County and Rock Creek last week. Got the kind of stumble coming off the mound on that one. Of note in terms of the sectional for the Senators, they did lose to Borden last week as well. The Braves are number eight in 1A. At least they were going into the week. That may have changed with the new polls coming out today. Count now at two and two. Borden, uh, you know, really has picked up baseball the past couple of years. They've, they've played some really good ball. And now three and two. Not sure if he's still playing there. He's used his eligibility at this point. They had a young man named Lucas McNew that was a fantastic player at Borden that playing in southern Indiana as well. That was always when Lanesville had their best teams in 16 and 17. It was, well, they felt they could go deep into the tournament. That misses ball four. They knew they had to get past a good Borden team first yeah. to be able to make a deep state tournament run. Number seven, Mason. Cox. So in six batters that Compton has faced, two have reached, one on a hit by pitch, and one on a bases on balls. Pretty civil conversation taking place between Coach Booby and the home plate umpire, and I'm not sure if that was – I think they're checking because Jackson left the game last at bat and yep. then came back in. So yep. I think that's what he was questioning. All taken care of now. So here's Cox, who is 0 for 3. He came in batting 343, which tends to tell you he's due. Popped up twice in a fielder's choice. Compton suddenly leaving his pitches high. 1 0 the count. Compton, a senior, again began the game as the third baseman. I, this is the first time we've seen him from the stretch, isn't it? Threw against one batter last inning. Brought this one down. Again, it's popped up. Here's the winds of, I wouldn't say they're calm. <laughs> they're they're I think, I think lessening. Gone, I think we've gone from a three-club win to a two well. during the course of this game. Runner goes. Batter swings, and again, hits it exactly where the shortstop would have been, and 
think even if Payne fields that one cleanly, there's no play. Yeah. So we'll call that an infield hit. And Cox has his first base knock of the day. And now West Washington potentially can try to pick up some insurance runs here. Here's Hayden Morrow. Morrow is yet to be retired. He has walked three times today and scored twice. First pitch swing and lifts that one foul. Morrow steps out on that one and then slaps it foul the opposite way. He's trying to get a ball to be able to pull into right field. Morrow now with 12 runs scored this year. One on one, the count. Morrow is a three sport athlete here at West Washington, so lots of three sport athletes out there, actually. Significant lead at second for the lead runner, but not going anywhere. Compton misses the zone, two and one, the count. In fact, both runners on the base paths are three sport athletes. Now three and one. Tomorrow can be selective here. And was ball four. It loads the bases. Now they have the senators. And so Nance now comes up in the exact same spot he was in two innings ago where he delivered a single that he thought had played it too. It was deemed that a base was missed, which has kept this a closer game. Compton steps off the mound. I think he was told, hey, work out of the stretch yeah. here. And this one lifted foul. So Nance has reached an error. He has singled twice. Has a couple of stolen bases and scored once. Pretty much just filling up the stat line completely. It's been an active day for he and, frankly, many of his teammates. That's in for a strike. And the count at 0-2. We can hear Senator Nation down there was not real happy with that call. We can't tell there may be 200 down there. There may only be two. That one misses. One and two the count. You pointed this out earlier, but Nance, if he can get kind of an inside-out swing, he's got a lot of room in right center if he can send one that way. First baseman playing in on the grass to protect against a potential bunt. Third baseman even with the bag. Turns on this one down the left field line. And foul. That one is foul. Had some hook to it. We'll try to get it one and two. Clark was hoping that that one was going to end up staying fair, but just, just could, couldn't time out the off-speed pitch. He was the one I was talking about earlier that had on the three-quarter length sleeves. I see it now. <laughs> and once again picks up. This one past the first baseman for a base hit. One run will score. Second run coming around, and there will not be a play. It's, in fact, the runner will go from second to third, and both players ensured they step on the home plate this time. 8-5 now in favor of West Washington. Now they the Senators. Still only Ian one down Rosenbaum. here, and Ian Rosenbaum comes up. Three-hit afternoon for Nance. Attack on to his RBI total. And now Rosenbaum will have a chance to extend the lead even further. And he is showing bunt. That is simply to let the runner steal second. And Nance will do exactly that. And now Rosenbaum will have the chance to swing away here.
Compton not liking what's going on, so he steps off, tries to figure out what's going on. Head coach Booby over here at the fence. Senators trying to get to double-digit runs for a sixth time this season. And they enter at 10-4. and four. Send for a strike. Senators hit that 10-run spot against Rock Creek when they last played on Thursday. A little low, 2-1 and one the count. Rosenbaum still in pitching, so this would help himself if he's able to plate these two runs out there. Popped him up. Third baseman backing up. Left fielder coming in, but that ball will fall in between everybody. Left fielder was had his hand in his pocket to start that off, and I don't think he saw it come off the bat. Last year, this West Washington team went 13-11. and 11. These two teams did not play each other a season ago. I think they were scheduled to, but rain out late in the season, I think, was what happened. That tends to happen from time to time. That one sails high. The count now full of three and two. And inside missed it. Ball four. So once again, the bases are loaded here for the Senators. Now that those runs allowed by Count this inning, those are the first earned runs he has allowed on the year. There's Haley. And the lead has never been larger than three. Here's the opportunity to change that. Yeah, this can get stretched out here with a base knock somewhere. It's in for a strike. Haley, a ground ball to paint at shortstop his last time up. Doubled to lead things off in the third. And walked and stole a base in the first. So he is one for two. That one fouled straight back over towards the Bowsman building. And the count at 0-2. Fly ball here to the outfield scores a run on the sack fly, but frankly, West Washington even looking for more in this scenario. Never threatened the zone, one and two. Haley, the seventh back of the plate this inning. Last five have all reached for the Senators. That's been a common theme during this game. Seven batters in each inning. Kind of two and two. Turns on this one. Left fielder coming in and getting win knocked it down. When so knocked it down, he fell down. We're going to get some run scoring here. Payne, kind of a late throw to home plate, but didn't really have a play. There's that 10-run marker for West Washington. And it's now 10-5 in favor now of the home team. Senators, number six, Chase Williams. Senators do a nice job there of running the bases, getting Hayden Morrow gets back to the base and then is able to score once that ball hits the ground. So make it four in the inning now for West Washington, their most profitable inning of the day. They've scored in four of five innings. So here's Chase Williams. And you're a couple of more batters away from potentially getting into run rule territory if you're West Washington. And knowing you're playing tomorrow, that could always be a benefit. Williams can give you an accurate stitch count after that one, the count of 2-0. and oh. <laughs> That one right underneath his arm. Williams was hit by a pitch his last time up. He has reached twice, but has yet to pick up a base hit. And 
Able to hold up on that one. The count now at 3-0. and That one had me fooled. <laughs> I thought that was a strike. Always a different angle when you're looking down on it. And really, you can't really ask the bases umpire. He's located by the shortstop right now. So Yeah. And that's ball four. So they'll make it seven consecutive batters that have reached the for the Senators. Number 37, Cole Timberlake. Here's Cole Timberlake. He struck out to end the home half of the fourth. And he'll step up with the bases loaded. And here's one who can, you know, he's a player who can really drive a ball. So if he could get one into the gaps like we talked about earlier, that's going to play two, possibly three. This one sprayed foul. And they counted 0-1. So Timberlake is 0 for 3 today. Did reach once. Came in batting north of 400 on the season. Has one run batted in. A chance for several more here. Brown ball. That'll get through for a base hit. Runner will stop at third. Everybody moves up 90 feet, but Timberlake does his job. Keeps the chain going. Wes Washington now has successfully batted around in the inning. Now they have the Senators, number 14, Alex Williams. So Williams will come up for a second time. I think we're going to get a pitching change here. Uh, nobody's warming up. Maybe a... a They're going to just flip the first baseman and pitcher. We'll have to move somebody over to first base. Guernsey will come in and change gloves. Has to ditch the shades as well. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that the shades were really needed today. I think they've largely been more of a fashion statement than anything else. Let's yeah. go ahead and take a quick break. We'll come back to more about Lanesville's new pitcher when we return from this pitching change. 11-5. Senator has exploded for a six-run lead here in the bottom half of the fifth. As you're watching on the West Washington live stream and the IHSAA Champions Network. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. One. So a fourth pitcher of the game for Lanesville here in the bottom half of the fifth. West Washington leads 11-5 with the bases loaded with one out. It is Guernsey that will come on and pitch. He had been the first baseman up until this point of the game. Guernsey on the season. Has thrown six innings. He has allowed ten earned runs during that time. His ERA checks in at north of 11. This is his fifth appearance of the season. He's got a nice compact delivery, though. It's not real long and linky. He's not a real long kid to begin with, but pretty compact and hides the ball well through the whole delivery. And this is a Lanesville team that primarily is freshmen and sophomores this year. This is a group that will maybe take their lumps the rest of the way, but Hopefully figure things out. Two seniors. Hubler a junior behind home plate. Compton and Albers, those seniors that we have called their name up and down the lineup so far today. So here's Alex Williams. No, Williams a attempted a bunt base hit to start the inning. That is the only out of the inning. <laughs> Compton. <clears throat> made that play, and since then, the last eight batters have all reached for the Senators. On the count of 2-0. Oh. Williams 
who's batting 211 on the season. Hit by a pitch and scored a run back in the third. And he may get an RBI without having to take the bat off his shoulder at this point. Yeah. Cameron awaits on deck. Taking all the way. That's in for a strike. Lazel's pitcher works really fast. He's not taking any time between pitches at all. Ball four. So it's a walk and a run batted in and make the lead now seven at 12 to five. So Haley, score. Now back the center. If Williams the RBI. Jackson, Cameron. Cameron, that's in for a strike. Cameron walked and scored. Started the parade around the base pass for the Senators this inning. It is Alex Williams at first, trying to put the squeeze play on. And now the rundown continues. And they'll get somebody out of this here. And runner gets over to second and third. Guys, there's only two outs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hubler <laughs> for a moment. Ah, oh, we're done with the inning. Yeah. No, you're not. No, you're not. You got one more to go. Nobody advanced there. Runners at second and third as the squeeze play unsuccessful for West Washington. Now, two down. So, two strike count. And strike three called, and now the inning is over. So, we'll go to the top of the sixth. It is 12-5 West Washington. Back in a moment as you're watching High School Baseball on the IHSAA Champions Network. American Family Insurance is a Bedford-based business with a wide variety of insurances that are suited to the customer's needs. There is currently a discount driving program that can help you save money on auto insurance premiums. Contact us at 812-578-3072 or email us at mlong at amfam.com. American Family Insurance. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. The Rosenbaum back on the mound for the Senators. Now his job will be to eat as many innings as he can the rest of this game, whether that's going to be one inning or two. So he has stake to a 12-5 lead. 9-1 and 2 coming up this time through for Lanesville. Lanesville had a chance to take the lead in the top of the fifth. Couldn't convert a bases loaded opportunity. West Washington came back to score six as 11 went to the plate in the inning. And that just kind of takes all the wind out of the sails when you're when you're. Well, not today. There's plenty of well, wind. <laughs> okay. They, true. Took some. Sorry. <laughs> true. There's plenty to jump on you. The, plenty yes, of wind out of there the today. Some of the wind is out of the sails. The wind is going other places yeah. right now. Yeah. So. so here's yeah, Guffey, who is 0 for 2. Number two. Fouled out to the first baseman and struck out the freshman. Nolan Hall and Eli Guernsey, the duo do up next. First baseman and third baseman playing in. And that ball had some late break to it, but needed to be a ball. That may be the furthest in that first and third have been all day. That's in for a strike. Well, we've seen both teams try to put down some bunts and Frankly, none of them have been successful just yet. That one went back out towards your car. I parked way down the left field line. You're good. <laughs> Count it one and two. In all the years I have done this, I have been tagged one time in a baseball game that I did. I proceeded to not realize it until I got to the interstate. <laughs> and I thought I rolled the windows up. Well, yeah, you did. Strike call. I had that at two and two, but clearly umpire had it at three and one, so full count. So you lost a whole window. One of the a back kind of rear panel window. Well. Pop this one up and it'll get out of play. I was lucky enough to wear one right in the middle of my trunk.
And the better part was it was me while I was playing softball. So did it I to your own car, Did huh? it to my own car. Lengthy at bat for Guffey. The count stays full. This marks the third trip through the Lanesville lineup. This Hall represents the top of the order when he comes back around. Ball four. And at yeah, some point for Rosenbaum, he's going to be flirting with that pitch count. Limit. Right. And that's probably what's going to knock him out of the game is the pitch count that he's up to. So here's Hall. Hall has walked twice, scored once, and stolen two bases. Only Lanesville player to score twice in today's game. They'll throw back, and Guffey dives back. He's walked twice, not scored twice. Runs scored by Hall, Guernsey, Payne, Hubler, and Albers. Players that have scored so far for Lanesville. Runner does go. Curveball, misses inside, throw down, not in time. Even if the shortstop had caught that cleanly. Guffey had the base stolen. There's enough insulation in here, you know. <laughs> nice attempt out there by Mason Cox to make the tag, but definitely not in time. Guffey takes a moment for the bases umpire to check on him. He's all right. Kind of is one to know. If you're Rosenbaum, literally, you've got more runs in the bag than Lanesville has outs at this point. Your focus can be on the batter at home plate. Yeah. But you can tell he's tiring a bit because he's leaving everything up. And there might be a move coming even after this batter. It's kind of judged by the body language of Coach Ingram for West Washington. Think Hall's taken here at three and zero. Rosenbaum will Ooh. rifle that one back, <laughs> and that was had danger written all over it. And again, in a seven-run lead, unnecessary. <coughs> Working more quickly this time, and that's a walk. I think that's going to be it. Yeah. The question is, where does Coach Ingram go here? Who does he who does he turn it over to? Looks like Hayden Morrow's coming in. Yeah, left fielder is coming in for a pitching change. So, again, let's step aside, shall we? Top of the sixth we are. 12-5, West Washington leading Lanesville. Take this quick time out. Come back and tell you more about the new pitcher as you're watching on the West Washington live stream and the IHSAA Champions Network. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping, alternations, and layer weight. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturday, 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square, we are a family-owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today. 812-883-4154. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. So Hayden Morrow is on to pitch for West Washington. He has been successful in his stints on the mound so far this year, has the lefty. In 10 innings, he has allowed two earned runs. He has walked three, and he has struck at 18. He has struck at 18 in 42 batters faced. The RA is 1.4. So Morrow going to be asked to come in and close this, not whether it's one inning or two. He could easily be either pitching tomorrow or potentially in the doubleheader against Mitchell on Thursday. Well, and that may be what Coach Ingram's thinking here. You know, he's got he's got Ian now who is unavailable tomorrow with the innings that he's pitched today. So how can he save enough pitching to be able to play tomorrow and Saturday? 
and Thursday. So Rosenbaum will <laughs> move from pitching to behind home plate. Now Lanes will have to adjust to seeing a lefty. Although the only lefty in the Lanesville lineup is the one that's due up right now in Guernsey. So pitcher is running. The Lanes will have runners on first and second. I'm glad you said that. I looked at my scoreboard and I said, there's runners. I looked at <laughs> runners on first and second. I was like, wait, I don't see anybody. There's a runner on second, definitely. Lynn kicks up just as Morrow gets ready to deliver to home for the first time. Just missed the outside corner. Shortstop keeping the runner honest. This one bunted down the third baseline. That was simply a read as to where the third baseman was playing. Yeah. I was trying to bunt your way on for a base hit. One and one the count. So Guernsey has reached twice. He struck out looking down the second. Came batting 235. He hit the ball to left field that got past the now pitcher's glove in Morrow. Make it a 6-5 game. Runners take off. Guernsey swings through. Throw down to third base to the wide side of the bag. And Lanesville's aggressiveness pays off. Duffy now with a pair of stolen bases. It was a, a strong throw by Ian there. Um, but wide of the bag, which is probably why he's not pitching anymore also. Corner infielder's in, or at least third baseman is, but frankly, if the ground ball is hit the infield, they will gladly trade the out for the run at this point. They're in the top of the six, leading by seven. Ooh. Slipped out of the hands of the pitcher. And the count runs full now. Senators have to find a way to get an out here. They're... They're struggling to find one in the sixth. They just can't get anything rolled over. Well, he rolls over this one again. A run will score. Will there be an out at first? No, because the second baseman boots it. It's going to be a close play regardless. Give Guernsey the RBI. Like a 12-6. And there's nobody out of the inning. Eagles. Number 23, Payne. Here's Jackson Payne. Payne, a fly ball to left. Singleton scored back in the first. He's one for three. Coach Ingram aligning his fielders where he wants them. And again, with the idea of, hey, if, if it's a ground ball, don't worry about home play. Try to get two or at least get one. Runner goes. Batter swings. Third baseman picks it, but... He tried to go the short way to second. Again, normally that's the right idea, but because the runner was going, he was able to beat the throw, and then Payne hustling down the line. He and the first baseman collided. Yeah, I didn't see on what went play. on over there. I was busy looking at second, but yeah. it looks like Titan Payne. Williams is down. Payne is, is slowly walking away from the play, but Williams is – has not gotten up just yet. And again, my eyes were at second on the play at second base. And as Payne was hustling down the line again, he and the first baseman got their feet tangled. And the trainer is out to check on the first baseman and Williams. And thankfully, Williams now back up to his feet. So a fielder's choice by Payne, and he gets the RBI as Hall scores. Ernsey safe at second on the play. Now 12-7. to seven. Again, the first four batters for Lanes will now have reached in the top of the sixth. So now Hubler, who hit it hard last time, but directly at the center now fielder. Eagles, number 21. That was a welcome back to uh, Campbellsburg to Titan Williams. He was in... Um, California last week for BPA. 
Which is? Uh, Business Professionals of America. And he's part of the news broadcasting team. He also does a lot of our live stream work, um, but went out there for uh, the news broadcasting side of it. So, so here's Hubler. Reached on an error back in the first and scored. 0 for 2 since then. Going to tap her back to the pitcher in the second and bat of the game. So after the Senators scored at 7, or 6 rather, in the Bottom half of the fifth. Lanesville has had their first four batters reach. Morrow slings that one wide. By the way, those first two runs both charged to Rosenbaum. Now it is Morrow who's responsible for the runners on first and second. The count 2-0. and oh. You almost wonder if Morrow's having a little trouble finding home plate because he's pitching with that jersey and then the <laughs> sweatshirt on underneath. It's now 3-0. and oh. Definitely a possibility, <clears throat> especially with the amount of strikeouts and things that he's had so far on the season, unable to be around the plate. It's his fifth appearance of the year. Well, it was shown just because he was taken all the way. Just want to give the pitcher something to think about there. Now the cleanup man, in theory, gets a pretty good pitch to hit here at 3-1. and one. Kind of made a late decision to swing at that, and probably a good one because it was, it was going to be a strike. Yeah. Well, he spoils it and fouls it back, and the count runs full now at 3-2. and two. Well, even slapping it to right field may score a run out there. The way the wind blows, if it can blow it in and knock it down. And Morrow, ball four. That loads the bases for the Eagles. So Lanesville with that benefit of a base hit. Have had their first five runners reach in this inning. Curtis Runner will come in here. And this was Campbell's spot in the lineup. But they're going to bring in a... New hitter here will the Eagles. So Campbell had the last two plate appearances in this spot. This is Klusmeyer that will come in. Then the courtesy runner with Hubler heading back to the dugout. Coach Booby has rotated through several of those. That's Ian Crawford. Now enters the game to run at first base. So base is loaded. Two have already scored for Lanesville here. And Morrow continues to have trouble finding home plate. I think you may be right. You know, with that sweatshirt underneath, it's just a different feel. Two and out, and everything is out wide. It's you would think a take signs coming here at two and out. That's in for a strike. Now you can be selective here at two and one. Lifts that this one, flared right out field the right. line, that'll fall for a base hit. One run will score, a second run being waved around, he will score, and it's now a 12-9 game. Like we said, Senators trying to put this one away, but then unable to do so, and Lanesville mounts a comeback here in the top part of the sixth. So a pinch hit, two RBI single, now makes it 12-9. Still two runners out there on the bases. Klusmeyer, this is just the fourth varsity game he has played in this year. So here's Compton. Compton singled last time up. A 
Morrow still struggling to find that plate. Pops this one up. But land behind our broadcast location. So Lanesville now with three in the first, two in the fourth, and now four in the sixth. And the Senators just looking to get an out. Two and one. Hits the outside corner for a strike. Kind of two and two. Lanesville's wins this year in baseball. Orleans, Crawford County, Clarksville, and Henryville last week. And that was a 13-10 game. Lanesville did play on Friday a 10-2 loss against North Harrison. And the count runs full. Line drive, past the pitcher, slow roller. There is an out at second base. That's the first out of the inning. Crawford does score. So it's a fielder's choice. Compton reaches. Brings the Eagles to within two. Now the Eagles number 12, Albers. So Jonathan Albers now will cut to the plate. For Compton, the RBI is his third of the season. Albers a single last time up. He represents the tying run here at the top of the six for Lanesville. He just scored once today. Morrow slings that one over to Williams. Being left-handed, he's able to – he sees all of first base. So, First five batters have all scored in this inning for Lanesville. Albers smacks this one in the left field for a base hit. So the tying run now is at first base for the Eagles. And they have batted around as Wiseman, Wiseman, who had the pop-up on the suicide bunt attempt in the fifth inning. Senator still two outs away from getting out of this part of the sixth. Wiseman 0 for 3 today. And that's in for a strike at the letters. This is the seventh batter that Morrow has faced. Runner will try to take third, throw down, got him. Tag applied and got him. Compton tried to advance on the ball that was in the dirt. Got nabbed at third base. There's two down. That worked out for the Senators to be able to get an out. Now they've got two. They're just looking for one more here. So Albers was able to advance behind the play. So he does take second. And a little different with the catching change. You know, Ian Rosenbaum behind the plate is throwing people out at third, not really. Albers again will take off. Throw down and safe on that one. <laughs> Ian thought he had him. He was all the way to first base. <laughs> so Albers gets his second steal of the day. And the inning continues, and it's three and one. Popped him up. That's, That's back over us in our general direction. And the count runs full. Wise been trying to get this to Guffey. Senator's looking for one strike and the Eagles looking for a base knock somewhere. Wise been choking up on that bat. Ball four. 
Not far enough away for Albers to think about advancing. So now Guffey due up for a second time this inning. He began the inning by drawing a walk off of Rosenbaum. And you expect it. Lanes will be aggressive with the base pass again here. We'll see if they try to get in the pickle out there between first and second and get this run across the plate. Not a size believe by Wiseman. There he goes. Hills take second. Time is called. And Brendan Booby saying, hey, that should have been a balk. The way that the <laughs> pitcher stepped off the rubber. Home plate umpire will come out and talk to the bases umpire and see if maybe that would be the case. And, again, the difference here would be a runner run would score, score for third. Runner's already at second. But they'll simply say no balk. Lanes still has the tying <laughs> run in scoring position. Guffey has a fresh count to work with. This is where Hayden Morrow just needs to buckle down and worry about the batter. Don't worry about the runners on the base paths. Popped it up. That'll clear the screen. 0 1 the count. And we need a fresh supply of baseballs. <laughs> there have been quite a few foul balls here. Another one hopped to home plate. And the count at one and one. <coughs> so Guffey, the 10th Lanesville batter. To come to the plate this inning. <laughs> First strike. Late call. But probably the correct one there. So two strike count. Blowing inside. Count now at two and two. And Guffey looking for his first base hit of the game. All Lanesville batters have now reached at least once in today's contest. Turns on this one. That past the driven. left center fielder. And this is going to tie the game. Guffey heading into second. And as a stand-up double. And the Eagles have put seven on the board here in the top of the sixth. Just a nice drive out there into the gap over the Senators' heads in the outfield. Now Nothing they can do but turn and chase. And we'll have a conversation now between coach and pitcher. Let's see if maybe a second pitching change the is going to happen for the Senators. This one, for a moment, appears heading towards the run rule in the home half of the fifth, and now we are tied at 12, and again, it'll be a pitching change for West Washington, so again, we'll step aside. We'll come back and tell you about the new pitcher for the Senators when we come back as you're watching on the West Washington live stream from the IHSAA Champions Network. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You know, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make right. choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov.
So a second reliever of the inning is being brought on in Nance. He'll make the move from third base, and this is a role that Nance has been in many times this year. In fact, this is the ninth time he has pitched this season. He has thrown 15 in the third innings. He has given up just four earned runs. He has walked eight and struck out 21. His ERA at 183. He has an 0-1 record so far on the campaign. So Morrow had come in with an ERA at 1.4 and proceeded to face eight batters, and six of them scored. We are tied at 12 now at the top of the sixth. And this pitching hurts the Senators for the rest of the week who play again tomorrow and then Thursday and then on the weekend. They've gone through three pitchers today. Now that number five, Hall. So here's Nolan Hall. He has walked the last three times he's been to the plate. He has scored the last two. He is here in a run-producing scenario now for the Eagles with Guffey standing at second. For Guffey, he had one RBI on the year coming in. He has picked up numbers two and three there. This one slipped out of the hands on the delivery by Nance. Still had some break to it, but missed high. Shortstop sneaks in behind, but Guffey did not have a large enough lead for that to be a problem. Once again, we talked, you know, it's not a not an out that you need to worry about out there at second. You need to worry about getting the batter. That misses. 2-0. For Guffey, that was his first extra base hit of the year. That was as big of a charge as we have seen any player put into one today. And this one, past the third baseman. Guffey's going to get the wave around. Lanesville's going to take the lead at 13-12. to And they have scored eight in the top of the sixth. Just a nice base knock there past the third baseman. So now Guernsey will come to the plate. Now that closes the book on Morrow. <laughs> he got two outs. He allowed six runs. That's not going to help the ERA at all. Off the end of the bat, left fielder Morrow coming back in, had enough time to make the play, and the inning is over. But again, from a 12-5 deficit, Lanesville scores eight. They bring 12 to the plate in the inning. And now lead at 13-12 to the bottom of the sixth. We go. You're watching on the IHSAA Champions Network. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Top of the lineup rolling back through for West Washington. Cox, Morrow, and Nance. 13-12, the scoreboard lights are getting a workout in this one. Lanesville, when they won on Thursday, won so 13-10. Trying to win in dramatic, come from behind fashion here. But at the same time, West Washington has scored in every inning but one in today's game. Guernsey, the fourth pitcher of the day for the Eagles. Now potentially is in line for the win, but would have six more outs left to pick up to do it. Greg, tell me what a normal week looks like for you. I know normal is a there is a, no such is, thing is a a relative term, but you're you're broadcasting all over the place for all different you know things you know. So what's a what's a normal ish? Week? There is no such <laughs> thing. Tomorrow night I'll be over at Indiana State for ESPN Plus. Their baseball team rated 14th in the nation this week. But on Wednesday, I'll have two of the top teams in the state of Indiana in softball. Keegan Rothrock and Ron Conner, the two-time defending 4A champs. They'll be taking on New Pal. Those two are in the same sex from the last couple of years. They're in different sectionals now, and they would not see each other until the semi-state round. 
believe there are 18 college commits between those two teams combined. Does that one hops to home plate from Guernsey. Then on Thursday and Friday, I'm doing a little Cowboys track and field for the Crossroads League on the ISC Sports Network. So broadcasting something every night. Yep. But amazingly, I'm off Saturday and Sunday, which is very <laughs> rare for me. Other than soccer Saturday on 93.5 and 107.5, the fan. Count it 2-0. and First time that Lanesville has led since the top half of the first inning. And they led 3-0. Cox singled his last time up and scored. He scored twice. Earns he's offering misses low and away. And the count now 3-1. and one. And ball four. Cox hustles to first base. He has reached now in each of his last three plate appearances. Yeah, the Senators, number two, Hayden Morrow. So Morrow, who went back to left field after his unsuccessful turn on the mound, he has been very successful at home plate. He has walked four times. Guernsey, safe is the call. Mason Cox does a nice job diving back into first. Jars his arm a little bit. And Guernsey, he had that leg going towards home. What you can't do is cross that front leg back. Once you do that, you've got to start going towards home plate. In other words, he's, had, he's been well-schooled on that move as to how to get the runner to lean. He absolutely yeah. did. And clearly, you saw by Guernsey's reaction, he thought he had him at first base. Well, and Mason Cox is looking to take off here at first. Fastball poured in for a strike. Probably not after about getting picked off at of first, but. <laughs> yeah, that move just bought him about two less feet off the bag. Bunt put down. Third baseman charges. Step and fire. They got him. Then hustling back. They'll throw behind and. If that throw from first base from Compton is a little bit quicker, I think they might have had him at second base. Now they have the Senators, number eight, Clark Mance. Well, there's been a little bit of movement in terms of around the base pads in terms of the fielders for Lanesville. So Guffey moved from second base to third. So that was Guffey that made the play over at first for the first out of the inning. Compton is playing first base. Little hidden ball trick by Lanesville that West Washington wasn't buying. <laughs> now that takes some pretty good buy-in. Yeah. You got four guys that reacted. Yep. But that ball was thrown away. And, and as long as one of them wasn't Mason Cox standing out there on Cox second. Cox was not <laughs> fooled by the theatrics in the middle of the Lanesville infield. He's out there smiling. You can see him all the way in here. Smile ear to ear on that one. Line drive. Second baseman fields. Fires over to first. That's an out. That is Albers, by the way, that moved in from right field. And amazing how this works as the runners at third base with two down. Two defensive replacements are in the infield, and wouldn't you know the ball found both of yeah. them in the bottom half of the inning. Klusmeyer, by the way, stayed in to play to play right field after he had that two RBI pinch hit single. That's the reason for the movement around the infield for Lanesville. So here's Rosenbaum. Runner at third and two down. Good job by Hubler to block that one. Rosenbaum walked and scored last inning. He has scored twice today as the young man that was the starting pitcher, but now as the backstop. Misses a little high and inside, 2-0 the count. Rosenbaum had 10 runs batted in to start the day. He has added to that total. He had two runs batted in back in the first. Lifts this one foul. Left fielder will chase, but no play to be made on that. The count goes to two and one. Senators hoping that they can get Mason Cox to come across the plate here to tie this up. Pivotal moment in this one. Lanesville just played an eight in the top of the sixth to make it 13-12. Off the corner. Kind of three and one. Haley awaits on deck. 
He has reached three times and scored twice as well. Spoiled a good one that time, did Rosenbaum. And the count now runs full at three and two. Again, popped up, and again out of play. So all three swings for Rosenbaum have resulted in foul balls down the left side. He's just keeping it alive, trying to find a pitch that he can drive somewhere and get Mason Cox to score from third here. Right, Guernsey has kept it on the outer half in this at bat so far. Tried to bust him back inside and just missed it low. He was kind of thinking the same way I was. He had been out, outside, 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 came back inside, just... Now Missed the elevation. Number 11, Eli Haley. So here's Haley. And Haley doubled his last time up. A couple of base knocks today is Haley. That's in for a strike. Catcher bobbled it, but that thing broke through the zone. Yeah. <clears throat> and the count is 0-1. Airmailed that one, one and one to count. Langsville on their fourth pitcher. West Washington now on pitcher number three. Rosenbaum not getting nearly the lead at first that he that they were in the first couple of innings. Swing and a miss. We've already seen Guernsey's A move, and I think has done enough to keep <laughs> Rosenbaum yeah. close to the bag. But, but also to, to Guernsey's credit, he really hasn't looked his way. He is... Focused on Haley at home plate. The one, two. Hit him. Going to load the bases here. Yep. I'm not sure if Guernsey was upset with the now, fact that Haley first. didn't move, but Haley also didn't have yes, to move. You, you, you can't put your elbow out in the strike it, zone, yeah. but you're not obligated to get out of the way if the ball's going to hit you. So the base is loaded now. Here's Chase Williams. Williams walked his last time up. That one just off the corner. I'm sure Coach Ingram would be just fine with a walk here, too. Williams does not have a base hit, but he has reached three times. He's been hit by a pitch and walked twice. That's in for a strike. Guernsey's got some good late downward movement on his pitches. And, and the Senators give up on it before it gets there. And then it breaks into the zone. That was a little high. Count of two and one. And a walk is every bit as good as a base hit here for West Washington. Ball three. Now, Williams can be very selective here. Just finding any way to get on base, whether it's a walk or a... He was taken all the way. Pitcher's pitch on the outside corner. Now, everybody will get a head start here. Base is loaded, full count, and two down. Williams does have seven runs batted in this season. Came in batting 381. Swing and a miss. Senators will leave him loaded. Guernsey gets a big out. And Lanesville will take a lead to the top of the seventh. It is 13-12. Eagles lead the Senators here in the West Washington live stream on the IHSAA Champions Network. Link's Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. 
We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. Three, four, and five do up this time through for the Eagles. Looking for their fifth win of the season. They trailed by as many as seven in the bottom of the fifth. And frankly, West Washington was to kind of the point where we started thinking about this one ending in a run rule. But I guess there's a reason why it's ten and not five. <laughs> Lanes will score at eight in the top of the sixth, and they now take a 13-12 lead to the top of the seven. Senators have to find a way to shut down the Eagles, who have, like you've said, you know, put up runs in the last inning, Clark Nance comes in and shuts that door that Hayden Morrow left open, but still got to find some way to get out of the seventh and then come up and score some runs in their part of the seventh. So Nance was the third pitcher of the top of the sixth. He'll be asked to keep this to a one-run game. Give the Senators a better shot to tire take home the W in the bottom of the seven. So Payne has been Lanesville's best hitter all year, batting 375. Yeah, Does have a home run as well. Had an RBI in his last at bat on a fielder's choice, which was his eighth of the year. Had a hit back in the first. And that had a wicked frisbee bend to it. That's the second time we've seen Payne duck on a strike, but <laughs> I don't blame him on that. That thing was, he thought it was going to bend around him. That time he stayed with the pitch, but the end result was the same, strike two. We've Nate. been here long enough, Dave Partner, I can almost see the end of the clouds over there on the <laughs> western horizon. It appears to be sunny in Vincennes right now. There you go. Count is 0-2. And that one. Almost hit him. It did not. Almost clipped the bat for a foul ball as well. Almost clipped the bat, then almost clipped the, or it did hit Ian Rosenbaum's glove, and then comes out past that. They're going to ask the first base umpire, did he have a look at that? In other words, did I hit the batter? Did it, was, that, was that a foul ball? And the answer is something going to be ball one, one and two. I don't know if the field umpire saw anything or not. He just shook his head. <laughs> that, that, that's really a sound call more than anything else. Yeah. Payne again had to swing at the curveball. Williams drifting over in foul territory and makes the play one down. Nice job there by Titan to settle underneath that. Well, I can see why Nance has the ERA that he does. Because, <laughs> again, the movement he's had on that curveball it took Payne one pitch to figure out, saying, okay, I've got to stay in on this. And yeah. Second one simply swung and missed in third. He got a piece of it, but he can do much with it. A lot of movement on that ball. Here's Hubler looking for his first base hit. But in his chance to go on the base paths, two runs have been generated. Now, as the catcher, he has not scored those runs. There's been a Curtis runner in there for him. But reached on an error by the third baseman in the first, walked in the sixth. The runner would come around to score on both occasions. Hubler into the game batting 308, looking for his first base hit of this one. Fastball on that one swings through and misses. Nance, that was one and one. Nance doing a good job out there of mixing them up on what he's throwing. No one never started in the zone, let alone break across it. Two and one the count. Also a nice, nice job by Rosenbaum behind the plate to behind the plate to snag that one. Pops him up. Williams comes in. Catcher goes back, but Rosenbaum runs out of real estate.
Rosenbaum looks a little tired behind the plate. <laughs> Threw over 100 pitches. And immediately said, all right, go get the gear on. Count of two and two. Not close on that one. And he's got so much bend on that curveball, you almost have to start that one out of the zone the way yeah. he's throwing it right now. Let's see if he does that here at three and two. He made more of the fastball that time, and Hubler spoils it. Fouled back. Nice job of staying alive here to see another one. Luce Meyer, who had the pinch hit, two RBI single last inning, awaits on deck. Again, the pop-up. Rosenbaum will watch it head back above our heads. Hubler's seeing a lot of pitches. Nance has not missed the zone at three and two just yet. And like I said earlier, this eats into the pitching staff for West Washington for the rest of the week. I got a busy week coming up. Hubler chased one that would have been ball four, but spoils that one on the left field line. You said you parked way down the left field line? I parked in Orleans, actually, <laughs> so we're fine. There you go. See, I really get to make Orleans geographic references on broadcast. Here I get to do that. <laughs> Count full of three and two. Yeah, you say that on your indie broadcast. They don't know where yeah, that you're is. Completely lost. Line drive, and now we get through the box for a base hit. Good battle between the pitcher and hitter. So Hubler has his first base knock of the game, and again, you would expect a. Runner will come in for him, so we can get the gear on. Looks like Crawford will be the runner that's going to. Head out to replace him. Reporting a run for the Eagles, number one, Crawford. Hoosmeyer at the plate. Just sent one down the right field line his last time up. Coach Booby looking for him to do the same. He'd like him to put one down the right field line again. He may be asked to put one down here, frankly. Knowing you've got a senior coming up next in Compton. They may also give Crawford the chance to, to get himself in the scoring position here, given the success that both teams have had in thieving bases today. And for a strike, Bruce Meyer was taken all the way. Swings away at that one, lashes it foul. And the count now 0-2. Clark Nance doing a nice job getting ahead here. It's just a matter of not using all of his pitches that he gets. This is the first time he has seen this batter. I would suspect a big bender is going to come right here. <laughs> Crawford dancing at first, but enough to get Nance's attention, but frankly, he's not far enough away from the bag. Yeah. He's really a threat to take a base at this point. Curveball, and you get a lot of late movement, but not soon enough to hit that front corner of the plate. You count it one and two. That may have been more of a setup pitch for these next couple here. Came back with a fastball and missed it off the outside corner. Rosenbaum held it. They're trying to get the call. <laughs> trying to get it. Couldn't couldn't get one for his pitcher there. Two and two. The ball was just off the plate. Chase that one. Sky high pop up. Mason stop backing up. Has the play. Mason Cox down. settles underneath that one to get the second out. So here's Compton. Now that he's the Eagles number 11. Compton singled back in the fifth. Fielder's choice for an RBI in the sixth. Also had a base hit back in the first inning as well, did Compton? Who was 
pitcher that was appeared to be on the wrong side of the decision yeah. for a couple of innings. It would be Guernsey, by the way, that would be in line for the win right now for Lanesville. Good runner's going to take off. Compton shows bunt. They throw down, tag applied, and they got, got him. Got him. Got him on top of the helmet is what it's deemed to be. So the attempt to get the runner in scoring position proves for not for Lanesville. And now the math is very simple for West Washington. One to tie it, two to win it. And Lanesville goes home with a come-from-behind road victory. Bottom of the seventh comes your way next on the West Washington live stream in the IHSAA Champions Network. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. So Timberlake, Williams, Cameron, the trio do up for West Washington. That is seven, eight, and nine. Angel trying to stage a pretty dramatic comeback. From down 12-5 to up 13-12. Trying to pick up their fifth win of the season against the team they could see at Ed Jager Field that last week of May. For the sectional in baseball. I know Lanesville drew South Central in their opening game. I think... West Washington is on the on the bottom side with them and play the second game. Second round. Second round. Yeah, I got the pairings in my email. I could look those things up. <laughs> we'll figure <laughs> that out. The Senators, number 37, Cole Timberlake. The Timberlake singled his last time up. Ground ball between shortstop and third base. You mean you don't have them all memorized? Believe it or not, I don't have all 64 sectionals in my head. Guffy <laughs> drifting and. Able to maneuver his way around the third base bag, and there's quickly one down. Kind of like Ron Burton, just read what's on the screen. <laughs> Thankfully, it puts a question mark at the end of the brackets. So here's Williams. He walked in his last plate appearance. Came up twice in the fifth inning. Was hit by a pitch and scored in the third. This one off the end of the bat foul, and the count goes to one and one. So the teams in the sectional, Rock Creek, Christian Academy, South Central, Borden, Lanesville, West Washington. So West Washington drew the bye. They will play Christian Academy. They play tomorrow in the semifinals when it gets to Lanesville later this month. Swing and a miss. Going to say he fouled that one off. That was just strike two anyway, so foul ball or not. Next pitch, a little more important if it's yeah. a foul ball or just a straight swing and a miss. Ground ball, shortstop, Payne steps, fires, and easy to see that shortstop arm from Payne as he – Made that one look easy, and West Washington down to a final out. This is Cameron. Cameron, who struck out. The Senators, number three, Jackson Cameron. And the fifth. He was the 11th batter of the plate that inning. Now he's got to find a way to get on. First pitch fastball by Guernsey in for a strike. Cameron has struck out twice, walked once, and scored. And he could not have had any idea when he... <laughs> Struck out to end the fifth that he'd be in this scenario. As Guernsey nearly hits the bull, one and one the count. And the dangerous top of the lineup rolls back over for West Washington. So, simply put it, it's Cameron's job to get on here. Yep. And the walk will work just fine, two and one the count. And 
Jackson Cameron has speed, too, so if you get him on the bases, he could swipe a couple and really help out. Hearns has been kind of aiming those last couple. See exactly how aggressive Cameron will be here at 3-1. and one. Ball four. So the tying run is at first base. The go-ahead run now is at home plate. Number seven. The winning run in Cox. Cox walked his last time up. That's one base hit today and five plate appearances. He has scored twice. We'll see exactly how much attention Guernsey plays to Cameron. First pitch swing at his cocks. That would have been a strike. He spoils it. Mason and sends Cox. it foul. He reaches out there, just slaps at it. I <clears throat> couldn't find the outside corner. Count it one and one. Cameron not taking very much of a lead over there after the move that he put on Mason Cox last time. Cox able to lay off that one, two and one the count. So Guernsey in danger of doing the same thing he did to Cameron, which is get that first strike over, but then work from behind. High hopper, pain charges, stumbles, catches himself, the throw pulls the first baseman wide. That's the speed of Mason Cox that we talked about earlier, him being able to get down the line and that home home plate area that causes that big bounce right off the bat. So now the winning run is at first base. Compton and Cox exchange a handshake after that close play. So the tying run in scoring position. Morrow pops it up. Third baseman drifts over in Guffey, gets to the fence and puts his hands up at the fence as he can't go get it. Owen won the count. Uh, the advantage here for Lanesville is that it is lefty versus lefty here. And immediately we will see a meeting of the mind at the mound. <laughs> They're going to have a conversation about what's going on. Yep. I'm not sure if this is about the runners and the base paths or just simply coach wanted to impart some wisdom here as to, hey, this is what you are throwing in this scenario. Yeah. And for those who know Brendan's backstory, Brendan just literally finished playing college baseball last year. He was a pitcher, played four years at IU Southeast, spent one year at Taylor University, part of an NAI World Series team at IU Southeast a couple of years ago. So he knows of what he speaks in this scenario. And I so said, we, we got to wait because umpire kind of needs his mask on. That's rather <laughs> yeah. important. Yeah, probably should have that on. Now we can resume. Count is 0-1. And again, runner steps off. Gonna, now he's got him stuck in a rundown. Guffey tags him, ball game. And that's the way it ends. Lanesville comes from seven down to win this one at West Washington tonight, 13-12. Craig, your final thoughts on this one? Well, <clears throat> final thoughts on this one. Great game. You know, Senators do all they can. Just have really one bad inning causes this to kind of go south for them. But I'd like to – you know, really thank you for coming down and, you know, joining joining West Washington live stream for a broadcast. And, you know, I know it's your, your home Lanesville Eagles that you got to do, but, you know, really appreciate just your time and, and being able to come down and do it. Well, again, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. It has been an absolute pleasure. And uh, while well, you see the screen has gone to black, don't worry, <laughs> we're still broadcasting. Yeah. All right, so with that, West Washington falls to 10-5. and five. They'll take on Christian Academy tomorrow. Lanesville goes to 5-10. and 10. They will be off until Thursday when they take on New Washington in conference play. Craig, thank you so much for the invitation. Thanks for letting my mom stay up here in the press box and be <laughs> warm with us since it's about 20 degrees warmer here than it is outside today. They'll do it for our broadcast tonight. Thank you so much for joining us here on the IHSAA Champions Network.